You son of a bitch. The drop kick, Marty Janetti. No, I hit you with that drop, that drop kick, Marty Janetti. Let me do this again. No, it's live, pal. Welcome back in to the latest edition of Hot Tag Wrestle Corner. I want half of your host. I am Rob. I'm Clint. Back on the beat. It is a day after my birthday, August 19th, 2023, on a actually a very nice day in Cleveland. It's a little breezier than you think. It's like 73 or something like that. Uh, good UFC fight tonight to watch, but we got some shows to get into from the last two weeks. Took a little bit of a hiatus so my man can heal up his arm. He was on the IR, but it was only the 10 day. <laughs> so we back at it. All right, so this week we got a quick rundown. We got Mount Rushmore we're going to have coming up after the news. We got both got a couple of some news stories to go through, uh, kind of covering some topics over the last two weeks. Uh, some funny, as we always do, pointing out the Saudi bitches and those who fuck up in this industry that we love so much that we call the sport, though it is often very ludicrous. And we have an example of that in one of the shittiest matches of the year that we're going to talk about later in the show. Uh, we also have the Mount Rushmore, as I said, coming up after the news this week, which since this was the last, we'll also talk about the last episode of Dark Side with Marty Jannetty before we get into the Mount Rushmore or they will correlate with each other since it's the last episode of season four. Yes. Four. So if they come back with the season five and we're lucky enough to get that, uh, we were thinking of some ideas for our Mount Rushmore and that they can do next on the show. Um, from there, we talk about the shows this week, starting off with SummerSlam coming through Rampage that was last night and also SmackDown that was last night. Um, uh, with that being said, let's get into some news stories, Clint-O. All right. Uh, first one we'll start off will be with Lacey Evans, who officially is no longer with WWE. Her contract expired on the 16th. Now, my question, is she done done? Like, she's not going to ever, like, resign to come back? Because we thought Kyrie wasn't coming back because she got married, and now it's two years later, and she is coming back. Well, she's uh, back on social media. She's uh, using her real name. With nah, I was about to say non-slave name. <laughs> <laughs> using her name, uh, Macy Estrella, and Limitless, Limitless Macy, that's her nickname. Uh, she put a... Uh, Paul basically saying, when the clock strikes 12, you will address me as Macy Estrella from here on out. Oh, and this jacket is up for grabs because, like, she was wearing, like, a jacket that got, like, her old character on there. Uh, so, she is officially no longer with WWE. Uh, her plan is, she joked about going the Mandy Rose route, uh, route you know, starting OnlyFans. But her real thing is, uh, she's going to, she want to open a diner. Diner, um, a cafe name, from what I heard. The name of it being Sunny Summers, which she wanted on uh, the coastal uh, sea islands, which is named after her daughter, Sunny and Summer. Summer, she wants her business to support those in the community dealing with addiction and mental health issues. It's a way of her to honor her father who died before her trial with WWE, due to which we talked about on the show his struggle with alcohol, drugs, and mental illness. She also will offer community space for community organizations and for addiction treatment programs with free coffee and donuts. Seeing that she's a Marine, she was a sergeant in the Marines. She wants to offer employment and empowerment workshop for women and military spouses. Spouses. She's been working. She's been working towards. She's been working towards the. Uh, she's been working on the cafe for two years now. So, and, uh, she working, she is supposed to open on the 21st of this month. It was a couple of days away. Days away, so, wish her the best. Hope that the restaurant's successful, love, when, uh, somebody that, looking actually, who was in the military, with all the struggle that all the vets and everything have to go through, the fact that they have a, a, a platform, they have somewhere they can go, talk about their problems and everything like that. So, I wish her the best. Yes, yes. Best. And I, I agree. Shout out to her. 
Uh, hope she, you know, does well and uh, I, you know, be a good mama to her daughters and everything like that. Uh, that's one of those never say nevers because wrestling is one of those industries from people always say they retire and then they come back. Yeah. Uh, small news story: Big E has landed a role in F Plus, which is a new family comedy movie alongside Randy Couture. It follows a group of teenagers who plan a perfect heist to break into their middle school to alter failing grade tests. Test. Some other stars in this movie. You got Tommy Davidson. Jennifer Esposito. Uh, them are two big names I know. Oh, uh, Wales Rappaport. I'm assuming he related to Michael Rappaport, probably. I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, Lily Jane. James William Jr. Lily Ray. Lily Ray Trianko and Kay Clark. Clark, so. Big E trying to go that Hollywood route. I feel like this going to be one of those movies like that one. Wasn't that the one movie your boys had? The Chaperone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere along the line like that. Like that. Uh, Eric Bischoff. I guess we talk about him real quick. Yeah. Talking about how he stayed out of WWE Creative. Uh, when he was the Raw General Manager in 2003. I got an Eric Bischoff story too, so that's cool. And he said that he never got involved on the creative side. He just showed up. He said Bruce Pritchard was in charge of producing everything. Bruce would tell him what to do, give him an idea and direction. He said Bruce would run ideas by him, but he talked about, you know, seeing that he done that in WCW. It was just a normal thing for him. He ain't think about it. He just did the work. That's the, He said that's the only way he could say it. Talk about R E R V D A W debut. He said with Rob, I was at a event probably was four or five, six months ago. It was an indie show. Rob was on it. We shared a lot from him. He was scratching. He's in such phenomenal condition. He takes care of himself physically, which allowed him to only perform but do some of the crazy stuff he's been doing. Great that he's taking care of himself. I thought he was going to retire, but I heard rumblings from him that he was considered walking away from wrestling. So he was surprised when he showed up in AEW. He said, but if you know somebody that's been in the industry long as he has, he mentioned Sting. Sting, he mentioned Jericho. He said he gets a kick out of watching them go out there and still be able to do what they do. Not to the level they did it 10, 15, 20 years ago, but it's still a compliment to do what they can do at a high level. So he actually gave props for once because he's shitting in the next story. Yeah, and he believed that Logan Paul is better than 98% of the current wrestling current wrestling rosters. Yeah, that same narrative flares. And so you asked about uh, fans considering Paul an outsider. He basically said, fuck them, fuck them. It's a juvenile, ignorant perspective. He's an outsider. Are you freaking kidding me? He's one of the most impressive sports entertainment professional wrestlers to come down a pike in the last 20 years. He puts on a clinic probably better than 90% of the company. 100% of the roster in most cases. Probably 9% of the roster even in WWE. Talk about his timing, psychology, execution. He said he's not talking about Ricochet right now. He said Ricochet is there at least 50% of the credit. Because it's two parts of the operation. So he said he's not dismissing Ricochet at all. But he said Logan could be able to have a match of high quality, psychology, athleticism, timing. And the timing is what blew him away. Blew him away. So... He basically said there's better than ninety eight percent of people on most rosters that we know of. Said he's fucking awesome. So, yeah, okay. Uh WWE uh merger board has been set to announce one name that's not on there. Well, I guess two names. Triple H is not on that board along with Dana White, who's also not on that board on that board but here are the uh they selected six new board members while wwe is selecting the other five so i'm assuming these are the ones wwe selected of course you got Vince McMahon, you got nick khan you got stephen r coonan who is uh i guess the uh atlanta hall state farm arena ceo so you got uh chief I media i don't like that guy's last name <laughs> Coonan? Yeah. And you got Nancy R. Telling, who's the EKO chief media officer and executive chairperson. Person. Uh, for Endeavor, you got 
Ariel Emmanuel. Ariel Emmanuel. You got Mark Shapiro. Guardian fans, we all know about Mark Shapiro. <laughs> Different guy. <laughs> uh, Silver Lake CEO Egon P. Darbin. I think I said his name right. Uh, New England Patriots and the Kraft Group President Jonathan A. Kraft. That's Robert's son. I think so. I'm assuming so. A uh, Reef Resilient Product and CEO Sonia E. <laughs> Sonia E. Medina. And then you got Kerry Willer, who's the Open Door Technology CEO. Oh, uh, WWE will select the last remaining board member. We don't know who that member is going to be. Going to be so. Uh, one more story. And I'll say my last story for the last story of the show. Uh, not the show last story, be a last story because it's about our favorite press we haven't talked about in a while. <laughs> Jake the Snake shares about how many concussions he had. He talks about Chris Benoit and he said it was a sad, ugly story for so many reasons because nobody know what happened with Chris. He said, when I talked to him, he's a sweet, good guy, good man. I was in shock when that happened. Couldn't believe that he did it. Did it. He said, and for it to come out the way it did, we really don't know, do we? I knew Nancy well. It was horrible. That's what it did, CTE. His brain was fucking scrambled. And we all know that his brain was, was scrambled. He talked about the history of his concussions. He said, damn right, man. I went down to testing stuff, and we figured out I had at least three concussions a year. Wow. Well, that's bad. That's really bad. Because since I wrestled 30 years, that's 90 concussions. <laughs> 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 so what my brain looked like, I often wonder. And I'm getting to that age where things are starting to get kind of funky and weird. I press a button. Nothing came on. I'm struggling there for a while talking because I have not talked a lot. And the program that I'm on helped me get to where I'm talking. And I'm scared. I'm scared to death. But, what, but do you know, I mean, I look, you know, the next five, ten years, what my brain's going to do. So, he said, I had three concussions a year. I wrestled 30 years. That's 90 concussions. Like, I don't think that means you actually had three concussions every year you wrestled, but okay. <laughs> okay, though. Uh, and then, last story, just a funny news story. This ain't the major story I'm saying. This one actually has to do with uh, Mickey James, because you know I always talk about schism and how much I hate them. I call them spam on this show. And she basically said that she's not a fan of the group. She says it's more of the name. She said the name is a massive turnoff, she said, because I don't know what it means. I feel like the 8% of the audience is thinking the same thing. They're going, ill, ill, what is it, what is it? We, uh, and she like, what is schism? Are these guys schism me? I don't know. She said she loved Ava. That's why she don't want to hate it. She want to love it, but she said she liked the math and the leader and the whole thing. She said the package is cool, but the name just suck. So they just said the name. So later she said she liked Joe Gacy as well. Okay. So. All right. All righty, man. So. First story for me, Thunder Rosa gives an update on her recovery, and she's almost clear to make a return. Uh, she's been out of action since last August, and uh, Doc Sanson has her doing a five-minute mini match soon to see how um, how she uh, you know, handles coming back. Uh, Doc Sanson quoted, good news, she's been doing well. We're at week four. She's uh, religious with her training, as she's always been, but religious with her training, doing everything we've asked her to do next week. If I could share, we're going to be in Greensboro, and we're going to have a five-minute mini match. She has to tolerate that. We're just taking steps and steps up. That looks good. Then we're almost there. Rosa replied um, about her being almost clear, and Samson replied to that, saying you're almost there. You're following the protocols. You're doing everything as expected. Your body's actually listening to you still there but getting stronger around it and taking the stress off of it uh it's fair to say she said he had like as a three more like a three week window from now so good to see that that'd be good for the women's division moving on from there we also have I 
got another story right here. My bad. Uh, about Cash Wheeler. Uh, he was recently arrested. Uh, which sucks because it's right before All In. But I'm assuming he may still be able to make that show. Reported he was bonded out of jail in Orange County, Florida yesterday. And he was free to appear uh, at last Saturday's collision. Whether an FTR had a tag match. Uh, they'd be advertised to appear um, live on the broadcast, him and his partner. Uh, Willie was arrested on Friday morning, sent from a charge of aggravated assault with a firearm that took place on July 28th. Willie is facing third-degree felony and uh, is alleged to have flashed a gun at the victim. Cass Willie is currently scheduled to take part in a tag team title match at All In, as we talked about, against the Young Bucks. Uh, showed up on as of Lance Rampage. AEW was still advertising him in that match. We'll see where that goes. Also, uh, note on backstage dissatisfaction, dissatisf I can't say the word, dissatisfaction, there you go, with the MMA rules match at WWE SummerSlam. Previously reported, Santa Bates choked up Ronda Rousey at WWE SummerSlam in the MMA rules match. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports that there was dissatisfaction with the match backstage, which didn't connect with the audience. Uh, the, performance blame, the performance blame created for not doing their jobs. Uh, or doing their ideas they added to the match while creative blame them for only doing their own ideas as a result no one was happy with how the match came off next story Tony Khan talks about some of his favorite memories. This is a really long one. So what we decided to do is talk about the matches that he has he has his memory banks uh, from the time of dynamite being on air so far uh, since his debut in October of 2019. Uh, Jericho and Inner Circle taking on... Uh, so Jericho and Santana and Ortiz taking on Chris Omega. Uh, Kenny, I said Chris. <laughs> Kenny Omega in the Young Bucks was one of his matches. He also liked the match of Hangman, Adam Page versus Pac. Uh, there was a match where... MJF had got involved somehow and defeated Brandon Cutler in the match. Uh, MJF has a lot of great matches. Uh, he has come up moments on the show. He especially liked his recent stuff he's done with Adam Cole and Better Than You, baby. Uh, there's a tag team battle royal match. The Bucks ended up winning that match, setting up a match to set them up against Kenny Omega and Heyman Page at Revolution, which he calls that match in particular one of the greatest matches in company history. It was a great match. He also liked the Darby Allen, and uh, he came out to help John Moxley even up the odds uh, when he took on. Uh, Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Jeff Cobb. Also, the Cody versus Wardlow cage match. Match of Kansas City, back episode 21. Omega versus Pac in the Iron Man match. Any match, uh, any great moments he had with Orange Cassidy. <laughs> uh, he, he basically said uh, his singles match with Pac. Uh, then Kenny Omega after that. A lot of stuff that happened in the Daily Show pandemic. Brody Lee, of course, and any of his tribute moments. Anything Brody Lee did pretty much was on there for a fact. The park, the first parking lot brawl was Santana Ortiz and the Best Friends. That was another one that was on his list. Of course, the Lights Out match with Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa is on the list. Also, Kenny Omega versus Brian Daniels in a 30-minute draw at Arthur Ashe. And Arthur Ashe the next year when he acclaimed were um, first title uh, to World Tag Team Champions. And those are some of his favorite moments from Dynamite so far. On to some other stories. So back to Uncle Eric being a little salty bitch this week. Some one of our favorite words on the show recently. Uh, A W. You the torch from Sergeant Slaughter, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, A W. I'm gonna start a reaction since she don't wrestle WWE no more. I gotta get his reaction. Uh, A. <laughs> AEW's been called out by Eric Bischoff on the fact that uh, MJF is wrestling on the pre-show. So apparently he's not feeling that because MJF is also in the main event and he's the world champion and that's a, a person in the company you should have to pay to see his match. You know what I'm saying? He's like the, the main course of the meal, if you would say, per se, um, is basically what he was getting at. I feel like his comments were a little salty, bitch. It's like, come on, let them plot the show how it's going to be and let's see how it plays out. I bet it's still going to be great. 
Uh, also, there's some more salty bitches out here called WWE fans who've been attacking RVD because he recently had a match on AEW that we were talking about. Eric Bischoff was praising. They said that he's disrespecting WWE uh, by taking that match. And he said, well, what you don't know is that I have permission, dipshit, so why don't you go off my dick? So here's, the, here's his quote exactly. Uh, in his words off of Twitter, quote, some fans are saying that I did WWE wrong by appearing on AEW. I wonder if they will all eat shit if I revealed that I have permission to do it. Or would they just move move on to puke out the next meaningless bullshit that comes out of their mouths? Yeah, I figure. I guess I'll just keep that to myself, though. <laughs> I think it's funny how ain't nobody, if you say you shouldn't do it yet, y'all ain't mentioned Impact. I mean, don't nobody really watch that shit, but still, though. Uh, there's a, well, they weren't really hurt. So it's an update on them. If you watch, uh, Triple Mania's last show, uh, El Hijo del Vikingo and Psycho Flying both took some injuries and were carted off. Uh, they both are fine though now. So since that's the case, I'm going to just move on with that one. And that's all my stories. Let's jump into Mount Rushmore before we talk about Marty. And huh? then... So let's jump into Mount Rushmore before we talk about Marty. Then we can get into uh, the shows for the weeks. For uh, the hold weeks. on. Last oh, story. you got one more story. One more story. My bad. This is the once in name. So, our favorite person, one, Tammy Sitch. We all know her as Sunny. She was also had a dark side of the ring. I don't know about her Chris they know how, uh, basically, her getting to the business kind of sitting on the downward spiral. Uh, she pleads no contest to the fatal DUI. DUI. Uh, she faces up to 25 years in prison. Prison. She gets sentenced November 27. The court did says the uh the crash that led to the death of Julian LaFrancis Lassiter, who was 75 years old. She's been held without uh bond. Bond. Uh, they said some of the stuff she smiled several times as she was speaking to her attorneys. And when she was asked, what was her plea? She said, no contest. Contest, she asked some routine questions. She said she'd been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress. Post-traumatic PTSD, borderline personality disorder, bipolar disorder. She was taking Prozac and antidepressants. Her blood alcohol at the time was a .280, <laughs> which is three and a half times the legal limit of .8 in Florida. They found the unsealed bottle of vodka in her car. They found THC in her blood, which means she'd been using marijuana at the time of the crash. <laughs> of the crash. She's also charged with one count of driving suspended revoke, causing death serious injury. That charge is a second degree felony punishable up to 15 years in prison, while the suspended driving charge is a third degree felony, which can get up to five years in prison. Prison, which means 20 years in prison, prison, uh, with just over 10 years of the second degree, which makes the past move maximum of 25 years in prison. She also got charged with four counts of DUI with damage to a person, two counts of DUI with damage to property. Each of those counts. Is a first degree misdemeanor punished by up to 365 days in county jail. She'll be sentenced to time serve on those six counts. Those sentences will run concurrently. Con yep. I know you're gonna say that. <laughs> Since the guideline set for the lowest prison uh, sentence for her is 10 and a half years. Years. So. Ooh. All right, man. So I got one more story. Of course, Tammy. Tammy, Tammy. Poor my ass. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So, this, had OnlyFans, and then she said racial stuff and lost all the fans on her OnlyFans. She's this, shame on her. this story next involves the the craziness that happened in this match that was uh, on Dynamite this week. Oh, it's a short story, too. Yay. Uh, this is the opinion of a former ECW world champion uh, who recently made a appearance on Bustle Open Radio, Mikey Rip. Mikey Whipwreck critique this week's edition of AEW Dynamite. Whipwreck didn't care. Whipwreck didn't care for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre death match, not understanding why the heels were running off the baby faces. Whipwreck Whipwreck stated via WrestlingInc.com, "Quote: I was watching the Texas Chainsaw match, and at one point the baby faces are beating the shit out of Jarrett four and one." He added that on this week's Dynamite, I like the tail end of the promo with Cole MJF. 
Uh, I hate to say it, but I didn't really like anything. The execution was wonky. I kind of felt that it was an up and down show. I did feel like it was a good show overall, uh, but that one match did bring it down, and we will talk more about that when we get there. So I kind of agree with this opinion. So. Anyway, so talking about Mount Rushmore. And Darkseid just finished off their last episode of the season with the season finale being the Marty Jannetty episode, which we'll discuss next after Mount Rushmore. But I thought it'd be fun to talk about, or actually this is Clinton's idea. Let me give him credit for that. Uh, next ideas for season five. So I, we had a couple. I had one I want to start off with. This is my honorable mention. Uh, Hannah Kummer, strictly off the fact that maybe she didn't have a really long life or really st- a long story to talk about or get into. But what caused her death was interesting and it's a way you can shine a light on uh, suicide prevention, maybe, and uh, prevention, I remember this story. prevention of bullying and things of that story. nature. You know what yeah, I'm basically, y'all cyber bullied the girl to killing herself. Basically, what y'all fucking did. That's those trolls out there. That's what happened. Like, so the full story is that she was basically on this reality show that was kind of like Big Brother over there. Yeah, and there was some guy on the show that was like trying to get at her or something, and she rejected him. And because that, she faced a bunch of backlash online. To the point that it drove her to wanting to kill herself. Uh, it's the long and short of it. But that was my honorable mention was Hannah Kummer. I don't know if you can get a full episode out of that. But the purpose behind it, I think, will be good. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, you think like that one, like, I kind of went that route, too. I was thinking Ashley Mazzaro. Like, I feel good like choice. And that, that's another one. That, uh, but, like, her story Another was, suicide uh, like, one, too. Like, then all the fact with the, the sexual assault allegation, everything that she went through and everything while she was with WWE, it kind of like. Real quick, before you finish that statement, uh, the exact story was when Hakamura has a quick paragraph. Following a series of troubling tweets addressing online bullying directed at her from Terrace House viewers. That was the name of the reality show she was on. It was called Terrace House. Uh, she okay. Was, she was found dead in her apartment in Tokyo on May 23rd, 2020. Her death had been ruled a suicide by December of 2020. Rest in peace to Hannah Kummer and um, condolences to all her family and friends who miss her. Yeah, Sorry. they did. A, they did a tribute show. You can continue, my bad. They did a tribute show for. Her. But yeah, uh, like I said, Ashley Mazzara would probably be an honorable mention for me. I mean, the fact that like the whole thing she came through, she was one of the was it Vince's Devil? I want to say she first started off, then uh, didn't really get a good run run and then she was also one of the people that got just cut abruptly like then because she was turned down advances from uh fans and other guys like that she turned advances down and basically kind of railroaded her career she went to doing playboy and stuff like that she was on survivor survivor uh but eventually she wound up taking her own life uh after she didn't show up for a show that she was supposed to do uh, one of uh, a podcast like radio show she didn't show up for her co-host had a welfare check on her they found her dead uh, so yeah so that one's sad that's, that's, I feel like her story like her story should be told especially with everything going on with the allegations with this man now like so alright that's not honorable mention all right, let's get into our actual ones here. Um, so for me, uh, my number four, I don't know if you've heard about this, but you ever heard about the WWE Ring Boy scandal from the 80s? Yes. Um, I think that can have its own story. And it's long enough in and of itself. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, what happened was there was, uh, you remember Jimmy Garvin? Yes. He had a brother named Terry. Well, I guess was back in the 80s was like, bisexual or on a down low or something like yeah. that because that dog with pat patterson from not right, right. Yeah. so uh the basis of the total story was there was a a guy who was a referee who used to get he used to hire young ring boys uh it was an african-american gentleman um i will have his name for you in a couple said mel phillips that's his name and the scandal first came to light in 1992 when one of the former ring boys by the name of Tom Cole filed a lawsuit against Terry Garvin and Mel Phillips, who were both prominent figures in the backstage of the WWE at the time. Also accused in this uh, claim was Pat Patterson, who is outwardly gay and has been with um, his partner, Frenchie, for years. And Frenchie is like uh, a hairdresser to the stars or some of the backstage wrestlers of WWE. Everybody there knows him. Anyway. 
Um, so basically, Tom Cole brought a lawsuit against the company because he said Terry Garvin like invited him to his house, had him smoking some weed, tried to get him to let. He said uh, he like asked him to suck his dick, and he said nah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like he wasn't feeling that shit. So then like he dropped him off or whatever. But he kept telling him and calling him like, yeah, you know, we gonna get you on shows and this and that, blah blah blah. And uh, eventually they like cut him loose though because you know he wouldn't mess with Terry. And the way it worked is. Mel Phillips liked him super young. So I'm talking like 8 to 10 to 12. And I know this is a disgusting subject for some people, so that's why we're not you know, taking light and making a joke, a joke of anything we're talking about here. Um, but he liked him super young from what I hear. And then once they aged up, he was cool. So when it was like 13, 14, 15, if they were still there. That's going to be a dark side. It's going to trigger a lot of people. It, but when it was 13, 14, 15, then, it, then they were like in Terry Garvin territory because he liked the teenagers or whatever. And he make passes like he nastily did to Mr. Cole. And I'm, I can't remember where uh, they said Pat Patterson came into it. But I think it's one of the things like he was in complicity in cover, either A, covering it up or B, like also being down with it. Like, oh, uh, yeah, I think Mel so. Phillips would like pass him to Pat, you know what I'm saying, type of deal or something like that. Which, if you think about it, remember uh, Vince McMahon got caught up on passing broads to um power with the power with the people um john, john, Laranitis. john Laranitis, you know what i'm saying so remember he had his old scandal from that so that does sound eerily similar just different sex yeah you know what i'm saying so i figured uh the wwe ring war scandal which you you're damn right it's very triggering but it's also an interesting story that could probably get a lot of viewers and it's a story that not everybody knows um from the 80s I, my next one is another one um where it's part of who we're talking about is known, but this particular thing that I'm kind of going to reference as the main point of would be that episode is unknown, more unknown. Um, but yeah, the WWE rumor scandal is my number four. Uh, my number four, uh, gonna call God with a different route here. We know they do usually do, they do like events and stuff like that. Uh, the one I go with here, I'm going to go with black Saturday. And now you remember Black Saturday, that was July 14, 1984, where Vince basically took over the time slot, which had Georgia Championship Wrestling, which held WCW for 12 current years, which led to the feud between him and Ted Turner, which led to Turner basically buying out Jim Crockett, and then starring WCW under his own name, which led to the Monday Night Wars, wars, you know, which led to some of the names you think of that came from them, them wars. You think of guys like Booker T., Gober, you know, so I think that'd be a good one. Just like the the the, it would probably be vent heavily vent lean, probably, <laughs> probably. But uh, I feel like you probably can pull some of the people that was involved in that though, probably. Uh, just to get like the lead up to it, like like Gordy So, like they said he wasn't there at the show for some random reason, like like a bug went in his ear that like something about to happen, and he wasn't there. So I mean, that can be a good one. Gordon Sully. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So my next number three also is a throwback. My number three is Wendy Richter. Uh, she had a major part of the company really blowing up in the 80s with the rock and wrestling thing. She teamed up with Wendy Richter. Uh, right as she was at the height of her girls just want to have fun stage. Cindy Lauper. I yeah. said Wendy Richter Christ. Wendy yeah. Richter teamed up with Cindy Lauper. Thank you for catching that. Um, I won't go mention your earworm from that. <laughs> I already know time after I know <laughs> anyway uh, so uh, they, they had that I don't hate the song I just hate that when you play it I, it just I hate it because I heard it like a shit ton of times not that word they had that partnership that sprang up because she got Captain Lou Albano to be like her dad in one of her videos yep um, girls wanna have fun yeah. yeah and then they you know decided to bring her in as like a manager with her own manager I think it was like her also her husband at the time when he was yes. And they teamed agent. up. And he's also her agent. That's what it was. And they teamed up with Wendy Richter. Wendy Richter became the champion. And then she was also became uh, sub infamously. This is the story I said is not as known, which should be the main subject of it. Spider Lady. The Spider Lady. I know. The very that's first one. screw job. Yep. The very first screw job. job which led her did, walking out right after. Which was the epitome for the 97 screw job, which is the greater known screw job. Yeah, that was the first one, though. Yeah. Spider, Spider, Moolah, Spider Lady Spider. being Moolah. Moolah, basically, what's the name? Uh, yeah, so. 
Uh, so Winnie Richter uh, left the company immediately after that. She also had a lot of battles with WWE over her pay and stuff at the time. So I think she'd be an interesting subject. And she's still alive, so you actually talk to her and get into her own words. So I think that's my number three, Wendy Richter. All right, uh, my number three, I'm going to go with a superstar here. Uh, I'm going to go with Perry Satter here. Ooh, I thought about this one. Because you got one and B2. He he started out with the Radicals, so he was around some of the greatest technical wrestlers of all time. Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko. Then the Mike Bell situation, which yeah. basically led to him getting paired to Moppy, where he was like basically married to a mop and everything like that. Then led to, uh, led to after he got released, he led to the drug problems and uh, everything like that, which led to all the health problems that he have right now. But then also, the, during the course of all that, he saved the lady's life. So, like, <laughs> it's like it's like ups and downs with Perry Saturn, you know. I feel like that would be a good one, too. Like, like he had it all, made that ascension up there. Then one, one, one thing, because he lost his temper in the match. Leaned his career. He tried to make it work with Moppy, though. He did, but it was just like, at that point, it basically was a punishment. It was a punishment for, for what he did. It did, so. All right, all right. So my number two. Number two. Honestly, these are no particular order, but my number two, we're going to talk yeah, about. Yeah, no right particular now. order, please, yeah. You're going to love it. You ready? Scott Stein. <laughs> Multiple reasons. Now, uh, I I'm going to talk about his record king when he was trying to kill, like, all the people there. <laughs> when, when he has so much shit, dude, that's why I say you you have to do him. You could do him because you could almost make it a two-parter because his career was so long. You have the aspect that he was one of the greatest prank dudes on the bad way. Like, you know how they say Owen Hart was one of the greatest prank dudes all the time, but it was good-natured. Nobody yeah. ever hated him. Scott Steiners was different. People wanted to fucking fight him for the some shit they did. Like trying to pull people out of their cars, driving at full speed on the highway yeah. while Rick was driving. And yeah. he was on the passenger and shit like that back in their WCW days, their early WCW days. Uh, his world, his uh, national championship days, I believe, with Michigan, you know, being a real wrestler in college before he went to pro wrestling. His time he spent as a tag, they were one of the greatest tag teams of all time. So that's why he probably split it in two parts and just talk about that and lead it up to where he split from his brother and became the other Scott Steiner that we all know, the big bad voodoo daddy and um, big Papa Pump. Holla if you hear me. Yeah. All those. But Deja, I need a release. Which basically meant he needed you to suck his dick backstage, I think. <laughs> That's how I took it when I was little. I was like, okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we have Steiner math. We have so many things we can go I'm to. You can bring in we Brian Brock Breaker, Brock too. You can bring, you can bring. You, brought, that, bro, you Brian have Brian Breaker commenting. One. You can have Rick Steiner commenting. You have all type of people you can bring up from the industry, from WWE, Triple H, or uh, w- w- o- <laughs> OWCW Cat. You can talk about his beef with Hogan for all time. You can talk about Steiner Math. Impact, you know, there's so much you can go to. Some and jokes, some there's jokes so that much was done to tank. mine with the well that is Scott Steiner. That's why I have him at my number two. And there's many more I can mention that I haven't mentioned there. Uh, another honorable mention I thought of because I was thinking of them with this one, but then I thought of, okay, I started thinking of like tag teams and I'm thinking of maybe great people that broke off from tag teams. So I was thinking like maybe Booker T, but he doesn't have enough bad in his story. Like, yeah, he went to jail early, but, like, once they went into wrestling, like, he didn't get in trouble no more. He would just... To my Stevie Ray. <laughs> up, up, upward trajectory kind of frame. Or Stevie Ray. Stevie, I didn't go, like, get arrested and stuff. Like, you know, yeah. some Jimmy Uso shit. Like, the Usos could probably have one for as much as he gets arrested for DUIs and shit off, you know, off camera and stuff like that. But they didn't do enough off... He didn't do enough, like, bad shit for me to think that he could have one. Like, the one that WWE did for Booker T was perfect. Because they talked about that in the beginning, and then he talked about his wrestling career, and then that was it. He didn't do anything bad. Steiner did all type of bad shit. So, <laughs> so I was like, it would be more of an interesting story to tell. But what I was saying for my other honorable mention out of that would have been a good one, but I think Steiner's were more to mind there than this one, the Nasty Boys. Because I always heard they were a bit of assholes backstage, too. Yeah. And they wrestled for a long time in a lot of companies also, so I thought maybe they could be a good one. Because they weren't actually even good wrestlers. They are just Hogan's friends that got into it. That yeah, just, they, were, they, were. they were just tough dudes. They could just fucking fight. They roll yeah. Hogan's coattails. Yeah. So that's my number two, Scott Steiner. Yeah, that one. I mean, so there's a bunch you could do. Like, I like to see one on, like, an Ahmed Man Johnson. Like, I feel like his. Is there yeah. enough there, though? You probably can. With you, Big T? You probably can. <laughs> you probably can go there. Like, Daniel Hemmer, Farouk, Dashville, like, 
What's her name, man? I mean, it's a lot, but uh, like I said there's no particular order. Uh, this one, I think this would be uh uh uh. This would probably be a three parter. This would be the first three part dark, dark side ever, and you can do it with this guy too. I want to see them do one on Shawn Michaels. Just his whole, just the fact that you could start from the Rockers to when he ascended up. Bailey had the biggest ego, became an asshole, did all the the drugs and everything, which led to a little downward spiral, which led to the back injury. Took him out of wrestling for a while. Came back, had the what's the name again? Then came back a third time, put on some of his best matches ever. The match, the two matches against the Undertaker, the match against uh, Triple H at SummerSlam. Like he the the match against Shelton Benjamin, by the way. Like that that's an underrated damn good match. I mean, he super kicked the sheen mm -hmm. <laughs> on that top rope. Like Shawn Michaels has so many ups and downs in his career, and you could put Marginetti in because Mar he said that uh. Martin Day said Shawn Michaels one of the reasons he turned his life around. It took him a long time to do it, but <laughs> do it, but like, you know, really? And has, you he, at, has he really turned his life around yet? <laughs> Sean, well, hey, Sean was we there. We about to talk when, about it. Sean was there, like we when he started turning his life around, though. But like, you just so much stuff you can go there with it. Like you can interview, and you you bring a bunch of people there. You can interview. You can bring in Bret Hart. He can talk about the screw job. You're gonna bring that in there. Yeah. Uh, Damn, rest in peace, Vader. Vader, because he hate, he couldn't stand Vader. <laughs> Vader, you could talk about uh, the curtain call moment. He has so many moments. Moments, it's just like, like man, like Sean have to have a three parter, like, <laughs> like how he like relapsed back to prescri prescription pain pills, almost cost him his marriage. Like he just, he can have. The fact that he married a Nitro girl yeah. who helped save his while life. He was, yeah, while he was what's name. The fact that he almost was going to go to WCW, they throw a shit ton more money at him. It's so much you could That's do with That's when Shawn he met Michael. him, too. He was basically yeah. backstage during that kind of negotiation thing between yeah. the contract talks for him and WWE and contract talks, I guess, WCW made a pitch. And he was backstage and seen her just went and hollered at her. Yeah. He seen her on TV and then when showed up backstage one day and just like, hey. And then... I think they said like three to four months later they got I mean, married. We've been talking about Shawn Michaels a lot. I mean, you already talked about the Chris Gandino one earlier. I might mean, we'll just give him one. He always what's the name? Another album mention. You can do it on Mick Foley. Yeah, Mick could have one too. He can have one. Yeah, Mick's had a crazy ass career. Okay, my number one, gentleman Chris Adams. If you don't know about Gentleman Chris Adams, I've seen a documentary on him. Um, he's the but, man uh, who trained Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, to be in a ring. He was a British National Judo Championship wrestler of uh, his age and weight class uh, three times before he was the age of 21. Um, he was also rose to be the world heavyweight champion in world class championship wrestling. Uh, he also wrestled in the UWA and he wrestled for WCW. Uh, over the course of a 23-year pro wrestling career, he held 26 titles. Um, he also popularized the super kick. I don't know if he popularized the leg slap, but he definitely popularized. <laughs> he popular popularized the super kick. Uh, he early started in the world of sport in Britain in '78 through '82 before he became a world class championship wrestling in '83 through '87. Uh, and then he spent a lot of time all over the map after having various promotions over the next 10 years before winding up in WCW in 97 through 99. Uh, in his personal life, his first wife, uh, ended up marrying Stone Cold years later, yeah. ironically. I think her name. She the one that gave him the name Stone Cold. Exactly. Um, he also had a lot of legal issues and a lot of crazy shit he did during his career. He has a legendary story about him being extremely fucking wasted on the airplane flight. Like, picture the airplane, uh, the, 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 uh, the plane ride from hell, but just about one person. <laughs> and it, and that would basically describe him because he was a fucking train wreck. He tried to fight the pilot. He got so fucking wasted and shit. Like, he tried to bum rush the cockpit and shit. He was doing all type of shit. He was wild. Um, there's a documentary about him called The Gentleman's Choice that was released, uh, it's the 16th of December, 2028, excuse, excuse me, 2008, uh, and it had referee David Manning on it, also the likes of Kevin Von Erich, Jeannie Clark, his former ex-wife, billed as Jeannie Adams in the title. 
uh, his widow when he died, Gary Hart also uh, made an appearance in the video. Um, even his death was crazy. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, he had like other legal issues, for example. Um, like I said, the airplane ride when he was returning. It was this was in '86. Uh, he was returning from Puerto Rico. He grabbed airline pilot John Bentley by the collar, headbutted him three times, and punched another male flight attendant in the yeah. face. It resulted in 90 day jail sentence and $500 fine uh, that September. Uh, he was intoxicated during the fight and became belligerent when they stopped selling him liquor. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and the FAA said he could like, they basically told him like he could never fly again, basically. Uh, also involved in the fight somehow was Kevin Von Erich, I guess, trying to restrain him. Also in 88, he was arrested after his wife, uh, Tony, uh, was found severely beaten. Um, Adams was in a drunken rage. Uh, he was sentenced to a year's probation after that. Well, uh, his death is probably the craziest thing that happened to him at all. In April 2000, Damn, man, he was doing drugs with a one girl that died underneath his what's the name? His, his story is crazy, bro. It's like, hell. Uh, that's why that I said it should got, be a that dark one, side. That one, that one got me like. <laughs> that's why I said it should be a dark side. He woke up like they was like they said was doing some. They was I forgot what drugs they were doing. They were probably blow. And like she like she like died like. He, I said, he went in the room to go to sleep or something like that, and she was still out there on the couch. They got, they did like a documentary I'm on YouTube. Like, I, the thing about it was they, they had this one chick that knew. I guess she knew him. She looked at like she was like on coke the whole. <laughs> she was wilding, bro. Like she looked like she was on something the whole interview. I'm like, did y'all interview her while she was like, like on coke? <laughs> Like, like I'm a, I'm a find it. It happens. I'm gonna, I just heard us. You know, I'm going to find is. it. I'm going to find. I'm going to see if I can find. I'm gonna send it to you. Watch. watch I'm gonna, you're gonna see how like she was named. Like I was like, it, oh it happens. God. Do you know who Corey Haim is? Yeah. Okay. There's a story that Corey Haim was was doing those dare commercials back in the '80s where he says kids say no to drugs. He's doing and a he lot was, of drugs. And he was super high mm-hmm. on coke during the during the making of those. Um, but his death was crazy. Uh, after he said. Adams and his this is April two thousand. Adams and his girlfriend of four months, Linda Kappengenst, uh, were both found unconscious inside a friend's apartment. The victims of an overdose it, yeah. of drug GHB nah, and alcohol. Uh, Adams had recovered, but ten hours later, Captain Guest uh, Harris had died at a local hospital. Uh, he was then living in uh, Rowlett with his new wife, Karen, and a seven-year-old daughter. On June 20, uh, 2001, Adams returned himself in for manslaughter charge that he was indicted on. While waiting on trial on the 7th of October 2001, he was fatally shot in the chest with a 38 caliber handgun during a drunken brawl with his friend, uh, William Brent Bure Parnell. Uh inside of his home in Waxahachie, Texas. He was 46 years old. His self-defense was claimed and the gun was acquired. Uh, he do was acquitted of all charges. Do He owned the gun. Um, yeah, the William Brand Bure Parnell. Um, following his death, Stone Cold stated that, I'm sorry he got killed, but the guy did not have good karma. So, yeah, Chris yeah. Adams would be a good one. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think they don't... Uh, my number one. I don't think they'll do one on this because it's a totally different company. But, but wait, they're not a- associated with any particular company, so they can do what they want. Victory Road 2011. Yeah, that should get its own thing. Why no, not? This, if you could do one this, on just Bass and the Beast 2000 and they really haven't done anything else impact, so why not? This was one of the worst pay-per-view that could have had some of the best matches ever. Like, when I look at this car, like, you had Tommy Dreamer versus Bully Ray. You had Rosita and Sarita versus Angelina Love and Winter. Of course, uh... I forgot which one. I want to say it was Rosita was Selena Vega at the time. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, one of them was. But yes. the finish for that got criticized. You had a first blood match between Hernandez and Matt Morgan, which Hernandez won because he sprayed fake blood on Matt Morgan. Like, <laughs> that's how you want the match. match. Uh, you had Kosarian versus defeated Jeremy Buck, Max, Jeremy Buck, Max Buck with Robert E. When the young bucks were called Generation Me and Impact and they were wasting Robert... away. And they barely had enough money to pay for $2 cheeseburgers at Burger King at the time and went outside and cried about it. That's part of their story I heard before. So shout and out to the Bucks. Go ahead. With them with Robbie E and Robbie E, which was uh, an ultimate X-Men for the 10 
TNA X Division Championship was one of the best matches on the card. They said they hated. That's why they hated the time of Impact because they were so broke at the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, you had Beer Money Incorporated, which was James Stewart and Robert Roode defeated Inc. Inc., which is Jesse Neal and Shannon Moore. You had AJ Styles defeat Matt Hardy. Hardy. This now now the thing we'll talk about this show will be the last two matches of the of the card. The first one was R V D versus Mr. Anderson was in the double count out. Because Mr. Anderson won, I don't know if he was was fucked up or something. He couldn't do basic moves and then somewhere reason in the middle of the match he went outside to do his like Mr. Anderson gimmick, which led to the double count out. Count out he got himself count out along with R V D, which was weird. And then we all know the whole sting uh, Jeff Hardy incident. We all know how that went. <laughs> Jeff Hardy can probably have his own episode. How Jeff Hardy basically no, came out super, super wasted. <laughs> that you seen it to where Eric Bishop basically walked in and changed the finish. And the funny part about it, you hear Sting saying, "They boom Sting like I know." <laughs> <laughs> he like I know, I know. <laughs> he, just, he was just so different. <laughs> So he was sorry. Like, I know. Like, he just kept saying it. Like, I know. They could be like, man. But, like, Victory Road. To- Victory Road 2000. Let me get you set up. Hey, there you go. You set it up better than it was anyway. Ah. Huh. So, <laughs> Victory Road uh, Victory Road 2011 would, would, would be one I want to see. Your number one. God, I just want to see the clusterfuck of everything that went behind that shit. <laughs> So let's talk about Marty Janetti hey, before we get into the show. Eric, but go ahead. We get hey, Uncle Eric. Okay, yeah, we will. <laughs> yeah. He and will. you get you can get Sting too, because you haven't had Sting on there yet. Mm-hmm. So that him, you get Jeff Hardy, you get R V D on there, you get Mr. Anderson. What was going on with him that night? <laughs> night. So let's get into the show, starting with SummerSlam. Okay, uh So uh are you we on, you want to wait on the Marty Jannetty one or? Oh no, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Let's get that. Yeah, let's talk about Marty. Let's get that out the way too. Yeah. So, so the season finale, your dark yeah. side. We're about to start off with him talking about him about his, uh, his ankles. Uh, I guess how bad his ankles is. His ankle is terrible. His the, his ankle, the top of his ankle, the part that like like where the knee faces out, it looks like the top of a loaf of bread. You know how it's like split top. That's yeah. like how it looks. It's really nasty. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, I mean, just, just the fact that, like, the fact that he keep walking around and give you angle. It was one part when he, like, when he went outside, he yelled something. I'm like, oh, God, like, he, he still feel like he's full of life that <laughs> I think he went through. Talked about how, uh, the fact that, like, he was, he, like, went hard, like, even when he played football when he was little. Like, he, he just went hard. That was just his, his thing was, like, he just lived it to the fullest. I mean, he talked about, uh. Talk about the whole thing with him and Sean. How like <laughs> Sean you- Michael is becoming more and more of a douche in these these. <laughs> First he got the screw job. Then they said that that he basically like would like they would give basically was Sean bitch basically. <laughs> but at the same time, did they talk about how they used to give the bras to Halcyons to get them to the room? And then when they were knocked up and after they like had their way with them, they were like throwing their face and shit to throw them back in the he hallway said, naked uh, and shit. Oh, uh, I've got the name. They of did that they shit. I heard yours. a bunch of stories he about said that. that uh, he said that uh, Mario Gennetti basically like he uh his name was Pat Tanaka or something. I think he said yeah. he, said he went to sleep and Mario Gennetti pulled out a gun and fired it in it and just fired around the room. Room. He like what the hell wrong with you? He like I would have to fire my gun if you wasn't sleep. Said he like shot like a hole through the wall. He shot. He broke. He shot like his his, his car uh. Car window out, <laughs> shooting the car. <laughs> the fact that some of the reason he got himself banned from India because he took a security oh, guard. That was so motorcycle. Deep. That was so <laughs> motorcycle. That was. And, and I was say, dying. And you're like, oh yeah, we're gonna get to. I'm thinking like, you like, I'm thinking he's gonna ride through the street. Like, no, he ride it up, tried to ride it up a ramp. He rode up the stairs and the door into opens. the into the hotel. He's like, and the doorman <laughs> opens the door for him and he rides. It in, falls out, and just crash, and then takes out like a whole what's the name? He <laughs> crashed, he, he crashed, he crashed into a fountain, oh, and then knocks the people into the fountain when he crashed. It was so deep. They had the it was so deep. I was they rolling. Play, they had the video of it. They talked about the one time where, like, uh, yeah, that shit was funny. Uh, <laughs> I was dying. They also talked about when, uh, <laughs> he literally almost killed Sean the one night when they got into like a, like a fight, uh, 
got into a fight. Like they said, like he had his knee on like his hand. He basically just like basically like basically like he was choking, choking him out. Choking him so, out. Yeah. And he started like punching him and everything like that. He said, I forgot he said, I forgot who he said it was that uh broke him up. He talked about the one time like uh his he had what was it the friend name that was on there talk about how like he like was he like overdosed on something. They had to call Jimmy Snooker and Shawn Michaels up there. They like, no, don't call like the police, no ambulance, nothing like that. And they basically like, had to like grab him and what's the name? It was just like, man. You talk about his career, the fact that he said he ain't feel the whole. He talked about with the super kick. He said Shawn Michaels kicked him so hard he ain't he ain't feel himself when he crashed through the window. Like God, he ain't feel the glass. Like right, the like he felt the kick and everything. Then like he that. talked about how that guy like was paralyzed. From him doing the rocker dropper. Yeah. And, like, the guy didn't take it the right way, and then they sued WWE. Yeah. And he got in trouble for that. Sean got off. He said Sean got off scotch free again. That's what he was saying. That kind of led to the interment between him and Sean. But my thing on that one is you were doing the move. Sean wasn't even in the ring. Yeah, room. I know. Yeah. And then the way they did it, like, the way the guy collapsed on the mat, like, Sean knew. Because, like, he went off the top rope with the Sean move even right after. Him. Sean didn't even And he touch completely him. missed him. You can see he completely yeah. missed He jumped right over him. Yeah. And basically got the pin. They said, uh, they talk about they broke him up. But he said, oh, we're going to break y'all guys up. And he said, Vince told him, like, Sean, you're a mega star. You ready? Uh, Marty, we don't know about you yet. We've still got some things we got to work on. At that point, he kind of figured, like, uh, he talking about all the, 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 the downward spiral he went on until he finally linked back up with Sean. He got a phone, they got a phone call from Sean. This back when Sean was, like, rehabilitated. Like, he said he went to, he said Sean was at Arizona at the time, I think he said. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, he stayed with Sean. Sean, like, got him baptized and everything like that. Did all this just for a week later to get himself arrested again. <laughs> again. So it's just like, oh, God. They talk about all the stories that he tell. Like, he just got a bunch of stories for, like, everything. Yeah, he, they say you can't really believe him. You don't they, know what you can said, believe him. Uh, then he talked about the one thing where we was actually talking about where, uh, we actually killed the man, but he said the man tried to... Yeah, they said you mm -hmm. could maybe believe that one to be true. That's all right. That everybody kept alluding to. He kept saying that, like, oh, he just lost the name as a story because he didn't want, like... He didn't want to be, like, big news at the time. It was the other bigger news story that was going on. Going on, so he said that was a storyline. I mean... I mean, some people you had on there. You had Bruce Beefcake who was on there with his wife, <laughs> who apparently his wife said, by the way, keep your hands off my wife. She said she'll flash him eventually, but the mics are on, so I don't know. <laughs> just, the whole thing was just weird. <laughs> weird. He, he might get honorable mention for having his own story because he had that whole boat accident back in the day, him always getting on everywhere Hogan was. Yeah. And then I want to know And then how, all the personalities he had. The, yes, that too. The main one I want to know is the disciple. Bro, it's almost like he had plastic surgery. Like, it, it was a completely different person. That one was I don't know, like, what went into that. The Zodiac. And then you went back to looking like old beefcake. And so it was like, it was like a completely different thing. It was weird. Like, how do you turn your body into this and then revert back to that? I don't like, know about all uh, the weird. I, I know, know that shit happened to you getting old. It was just weird. I want to know the, the character when you became like a hairdresser, your finish was the high knee. Like, like stuff like that, bro. Like, we, we need to know you were the man of many gimmicks. And none of them were good. <laughs> were good. <laughs> good. Like, you literally, you literally. And then him and Hogan ain't even cool now. It's like, yeah. Hogan burnt them bridges with everybody. But, yeah, he basically... His career basically hung, hung. He admits it himself. Like, yeah, he like, I basically got put on because Hulk was my best friend. Like, yeah, he was. So he ain't need you no more. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so let's get into the shows this week, finally. Starting with SummerSlam. We'll try to wrap them up in the next hour so we can get out of here. Go ahead, brother. Uh, yeah, so first match was Logan Paul versus... Uh, Ricochet, what you expected in this match? Uh, first of all, Logan Paul playing aggravator again, who basically was provoking Samantha Irvin every chance he could. I mean, as your opponent's girlfriend, understand that. Uh, started off shaky, picked up later. This bit was a spot, spot match. They had a spot where uh, they hit a Spanish fly, but they both landed on their feet. Feet, which led to Paul hitting a buckshot lariat, and then they start training big moves. Ricochet missed a 630. Somebody of his entourage hit Ricochet with some brass nuts. Nuts while the ref was checking on him. On him. And uh basically that's how Logan Paul gets the win. When 
I mean, they have a skill set that is, is that is unparalleled. But it's a good match though between them two. It's what you expected from Logan Paul. Uh, next was Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. This is the, the three. This is the dirty comment between these two. Cody won the first one. Brock won the second one. Basically, Rhodes was basically just on Brock as soon as it start. Couple disaster kick, kick. Then all of a sudden became a back and forth Brock Lesnar time to match. He started throwing suplexes. He started basically just slinging Rhodes everywhere he can, can. Uh, Gamma F5, then Gamma another F side on the announce table, table, then uh, basically let him for another suplex. Finally hit him with some steel stuff, disaster kick, Cody cutters, crossroads. Uh, Lesnar got to the Kimura, but he forced a rope break, snatched his own Kimura. Mora slipped off the X5, landed three crossroads for the win. Uh, in a moment that was not planned, uh, Brock Lesnar basically. Gave him a hug, basically raised his hand, basically showing him his respect. Respect, which a lot of people said that was was not planned. So that's basically Lesnar basically giving his endorsement of Cody Rhodes. Next, we had a uh, battle royal. I mean, this was just literally something to give LA Knight a win. When, I mean, final three was cross. With Sheamus, AJ Styles, LA Knight, Cross got rid of Styles, it led to Knight and Sheamus. Sheamus, uh, Knight basically tossed Sheamus over the ring. So, LA Knight gets that one, that's just what you're supposed to do. Next was the MMA match, which, uh, a lot of people had different, sorry about that, a different depends on, depends on, uh, Basically, with MMA rule match, so basically it played to the strength of MMA artists could be win by knockouts, submission of referee stoppage, basically similar stuff, hip toss, run with some body shots, try to go over that padded arm bar, it ain't work. Uh, basically with a nice head kick, with center out the ring, uh, run with a flying knee. Basically, apparently suffered a, a, a arm injury, which which is true. Like the MMA rules match, why is the ref checking on Shannon Baszler's arm? Like you didn't know, like you can't check on the arm like mid match. Uh, the part of it that confused me the most was the fact that you just did a merger with the biggest MMA outfit mm -hmm. in the world. Wouldn't you think to like lean on them for how this shit should look or something? I mean, he said, but the, the Ronda and Shayna Bang production backstage, production blamed them, basically saying so. Um, it just should have went to the fight. You shouldn't do it, man. You should just went with the fight pit. That always seems to work. That's what I said. Why don't you just do the fight pit? Then you could have it be more it worked, WWE it, it, it than worked, MMA. It worked with NXT. Uh, yeah. You did it with Riddle and Thatcher. I mean, yeah, you still can do the MMA thing. And there, you could have did that match, but just had them fight MMA style, though. Uh, basically, Baszler basically choked out Ronda and gets the win. This was basically Ronda basically giving her her older uh, to Shayna, basically for getting her in the business and everything like that. Uh, next, we have uh, probably arguing, probably say probably the match of the night. Gunter versus Drew McIntyre. I mean, did we expect anything different, though? <laughs> different, though? I mean, they beat the shit out of each other. Clotheslines. I mean, chops. I mean, future shot. Gunter with the power bomb. McIntyre with some shot. Huge Claymore. Gunter with McIntyre fighting on the ropes. He shoved McIntyre into uh, McIntyre landing with the ropes between his legs, Gunter Bates landed a top row splash, clothesline, symphony power bomb, one, two, three, not symphony power bomb, uh, power bomb, one, two, three, uh, basically, it's a great match. I, I, I agree. He's uh, close to being the honky tonk man's record for long reigning intercontinental championship. championship. Yeah. Um, I agree with it being the match of the night, being that there were some other matches that were close, but they had some interferences that would, that ended my, ended, and um, that um, 
uh, add into my opinion of those matches at the end of the day. That's why I said this was the number one. Another close one is the one we're about to talk about now. I'll tag him for you, brother. Let's talk about the, uh, the Raw World title match with Seth Rollins taking on Finn Balor. I thought this was a good match, but this is one of the ones I couldn't put it over the last match because of the interference in the match. Though, it does tie in the story, which I do like because I like where that story is going, which is good. We'll talk about it. So, basically, this match is their... F I think they had one before this, but this is basically their big match rematch from when Finn Balor first won his world championship right. when they made the original Universal title, was it, on yeah. Raw? Yeah, that's um, slam, seven he years ago. He had to vacate the because he... Because of injury. He separated yeah, his shoulder or yeah. something like that at the time during the match. Um, and now it's out there. his great time at NXT and his first call-up. Um, so this, this match itself, um, it basically came down to... Uh, there was a spot in the match where they both traded rollers for two. Uh, Balor kicked out, sending Rollins to the right hand, uh, into a right hand from Priest. Uh, Balor hits the pedigree, excuse me, yeah, Balor hits the pedigree uh, for a two spot, and then here comes the rest of Judgment Day down to the ring. Priest offers the briefcase to Balor. He turned it down, like, like no, I want to do this on my own, uh, allowing Rollins to hit a, a, a quick stomp. For two, uh, Rollins dived onto Priest on the outside and takes out Dominic Mysterio also, but this allowed Bow to hit a spling blade and another corner drop kick. He hit the coup de grace for a very close two count. I'm talking 2.999. Um, then Balor was stunned from that. Priest tries to slide. We know the, the, the briefcase. Yeah. He's telling him, look, and then he got up there and tried to distract the referee. But while doing that, I think he got conflicted about the damn briefcase again and was on his knees, mm -hmm. allowing enough time for Seth Rollins to get up and hit a proper stomp on his ass on top of the briefcase. One, two, three. Same thing as the uh, first match when, uh, when Priest with the briefcase and he missed the coup de grace and they lost him to the Western Exactly. Game. This time, uh, Priest is not pleased after the match and him and uh, Ballard Larry at each other. Um, the Alpha Academy and the Miz uh, shield my car emanate, and they lock him into a briefcase for his effort, the Amble case, I guess. Uh, they recap the women's title match um, from SmackDown with Oscar, Bianca Belair, and Charlotte all having been fighting each other and cheating each other out of title matches. Um, so now it's time for the triple threat match. I like this match a lot. I like that it was a different iteration of these three. We've seen all three of each other in one on ones against each other, except for you haven't seen as much of. Bianca versus Charlotte, that's coming on her ride, and I would suspect because he's faced everybody else. My horsewoman is set for Charlotte. Uh, of the four horsewomen, I say, is set for Charlotte. Um, she's faced Oscar before. Oscar's faced Charlotte, obviously. Oscar came into this as a champion. I thought I called her retaining. She didn't, and I, I for the reasons why I like it. Let's get down to that. So we get down to the end of the match. Everything's going on. Eventually, there's a spot where Bianca Belair, like, dives to the outside. Um, I forgot who she dove on, but whatever she did, she messed up her knee. And she was selling it very, very well. She yeah. ends up getting back into the ring, ties up with Charlotte. Charlotte slips her to figure eight. While she's in the figure eight, and like we said, she's selling that knee. And she they tried to cart, like, she tried to, they, uh, had to, you know, um, the doctors and some um, backstage dudes try to walk her off, but she came back down to the ring during the match. Like, she two sold minutes the hell out of it. So That's good. what I said, she people, sold it. People was actually looking like, Dang, oh, no, like, she really oh blew God, her knee like really it was hurt? an ACL or something. She came back, Charlotte put the figure eight on her. My girl, Oscar, to her credit, while Charlotte had her in the figure eight, she spit the mist of yes. Charlotte's face. That was fucking awesome. While she was in the yes. bridge. So you would think she had it, but then her breaking up the figure eight allowed uh, Bianca Belair to hit her with some type of roll up out of that when she tried to make the pin on Charlotte. And then she ends up being your new champion for about 30 seconds. Because then we get 95 PSA. Mm, mm, mm. And he started that nice little EDM beat that uh, Rio uses as her theme. She came down to the ring with Bailey. They started taking out Bel Air. They took out Charlotte, both of them with the briefcase. She then she takes out uh excuse me, she takes out uh, uh Oscar and Charlotte, then takes out Bel Air. She goes up top, hits the moonsault, and we have a new Raw's women's championship. Props to her. Hopefully her runs go better than Oscar's first. Um, I don't even I don't even remember if Kyrie had one in the main roster. I know she had one in NXT, but she's been a beast for as long as she's been in uh, WWE. I'm glad to see her finally getting her propers and her crown. EO Sky. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one of Triple H's favorites. So I, I and so what are your thoughts on the match? I really like the match. Before we move she's on to gonna, the 
to the, to the main event. She's gonna she's gonna she's gonna probably have a good reign with that championship. I like the I like you know, I like a lot of stuff because I like this match because it's a lot of storylines you can pull from. Mm -hmm. I think Bianca Belair eventually is going to turn heel. She I, adamant, I, I had she's a story adamant, I lost. I had a story she, I lost that was talking about that she she's made. Adamant, she's adamant on the fact that she want to stay face. Like she keep comparing. Like she, she want to do the Cena. She want to do the Cena thing. Like she want to what's the name? But like. I feel like the hill turn is going to have to come because the storyline basically I'm hearing like, it might been her getting like basically like no, let me ask. came back and got the opportunity over her after she originally like let me lost ask the this match to get a rematch so and L then let me ask you this because this may play into it too are the street profits about to turn heel because I don't think they're going to break them up because don't they have that storyline with them going with Bobby Lassie yeah. now and then they might I guess that's a new faction for him maybe and are they all going to be phased or are they going to be healed because if they turn heel that could be the evidence for her could be so we'll talk about uh, that now. yeah a little foreshadowing right there Sorry. uh no it's good uh so it did also too i mean the thing with bailey and 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 uh you know sky like that like that it's going to lead to them feuding down the line eventually Eventually, they're gonna wind up feeling because Bay. We all know Bay Vince is gonna get jealous of. Uh, yeah, she's gonna be a sorry bitch about it. And she's gonna <laughs> what's the name? Uh, so I like I like that you can do a bunch of stuff with this. You can build too. You can still. I also think too. I think she's gonna if she's gonna feud with Charlotte, she has to stay face. I don't like I don't like face Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like Charlotte is more and more more and more in in the face role. Also too, difference between Bianca and John Cena. The crowd still get pumped like when her music hit. Like they're still be behind behind her. You can tell you had like a little Cena fatigue. T like when Rick kept pushing the hell out of Roman Reigns, you had Roman fatigue. But like it's like the crowd just they're still behind Bianca. Like so also too, I mean she kind of generates with like <laughs> a lot of people out here today. So I mean I, I think it was a great match. I love the fact that honestly like. Bianca Belair was the one that you would have her cash in on. Like, it, it made sense. You wasn't going to do it on Oscar. You know, I think that could set to a few down the line between them two. That would be a great match between, mm -hmm. between them two. It's a lot of stuff you can do here. But I think Bailey is tied up with Shafi right now. Right now, so. All right, so let's, let's get into the main event. Now, some people liked it. Uh, I thought the ending was interesting, but I didn't like the bloatedness of this fucking match. This match, bro. This was a f close to four hour pay-per-view, if not a four hour pay-per-view, right? This match on the timeline on my TV, just them coming to the ring started at like 321. And the match didn't start until about 15 minutes after that. Yeah, they did all the extra talk. Yeah. Oh. It was annoying. And then on top of that, the match was so long. I felt like it dragged at moments. And before we got down to the ending, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, they said Roman got hurt in that match, though, so they had to change it on the fly. Fly. Mm. But, yeah, that match was just so long. It, 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 I, so let's just, I love, I love Roman Reigns' character. I'm going to skip to it quick, but I'll let you finish. I you love his character. I'm just so sick and tired of the whole. This man could never win a title. You know who he remind me of? He remind me of Triple H Attitude Era. You remember Triple H had DX and, and, and all the, and the man Hamlet regime? This man mm -hmm. will never beat nobody fair. He'll retain his title by some fluky cheating type shit, but he always retained a title. This is Roman Reigns. I don't think Roman Reigns, since he won that championship since Turner Hill, has beat anybody clean. Clean. You know, clean. You, know he has, you know he has the Hogan Claws, right? <laughs> he can decide how he loses that belt. So I think that might play into it. Um, not saying but I like, he has but, that much but, ego, but... Yeah, but I also like that tied to the whole bloodline thing, though, because, like, basically, like, Triple H, he basically, like, Triple H, you gotta give me a whole new belt, because the fact that you got, yo. Know, I'm holding the both belts right now. You had to make another belt for a whole another show because you, what can you do? Like, so it, I like that it ties into, it wasn't just, it ain't him like being the dick like Hogan was basically. I'm not about to, what's the name of this guy, this guy. It ties into the storyline with him like having the creative control and everything like that because he is the biggest star in WWE right now. Right now. <laughs> so let's, let's get to right the ending now, of this one. So we get to a point where, uh, Jay's making a run. He's really, you know, damn, we're taking uh, Roman out. He gets a 2.99 himself. They get to the outside. 
Here goes interference from Solo Sokoa. Uh, at Bro, one... Solo hit around for a while. He ain't. He... <laughs> and then for. And they teased that turn too when Solo yeah. accidentally ate a spear from Rain. Yeah, they I was teased about that. To say like... that. Uh, Jay duped him into uh, taking a spear on uh, his behalf from Roman. And then when he ended up getting busted through the barricade and the outside, Roman hit a spear on Jay. Solo mentioned the shit without saying a word. He looked at him like, hey, and pointed at his stomach like, well, what's up with that? Um, they ended up brawling into the crowd for a while. He ends up taking Soul's version of the Uranagi or the Rock Bottom, whatever you want to call it. Especially, shout out to those folks down in Alabama. Even that cat that swam from one boat to go get into the fight, hitting rock bottles on, on racist cats on the dock. So shout out to them. That's why I mentioned that. But anyway, Solo hit a rock bottom uh, on Jay, put him through a table on the outside. They dragged him back to the ring. Uh, and that still didn't get it done. Jay made another comeback. Then, as he's making the pin from this comeback, hits his own spear, ugly version of it, as you say. Some mysterious person in a black hoodie in front of the crowd drags him out of the ring. Then it turns out it's his brother. He reveals himself before hitting a super kick and throwing him back in the ring so he can take a spear from Roman. One, two, three, Roman Reigns retains once again. Now, uh, this match in total, not including the entrances, it was 36 minutes. Yeah, in, in yeah. the, 36 minutes, basically, itself. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that match was not... It's what you expect from a Roman Reigns match. A lot of a, a lot of uh, walking around, talking shit, pandering to the crowd, Paul Heyman expressions. It's, it's, it's what you expect from a Roman match. match. So, I mean... Yeah. <sighs> Next! Here we go into Raw. Monday Night Raw. I had a right Raw this time, too. From the 7th? Yes. Commercial free for the first hour. We got to start this Raw off. Cody Rose. You want to talk about some things, Cody? Of course, Cody always wants to talk about things. He talks about how Brock Lesnar basically gave him his respect after the match. After the match. Match. He said that was Lesnar acknowledging him. <laughs> Doing dig that right. <laughs> right. Uh... He said he can be anybody in the world. Here comes Seth Rollins, who was wearing them massive yellow shoes. <laughs> and that shiny God. blue suit. He looked like yeah. a human minion. Yeah, he said he said that he's thinking Cody for helping him, but put that I could be anyone to the test. Outcome Jumman's Day. No Finn here. Here. Uh, basically, Dom is here. He said, <laughs> I like how they said Dom is the real workhorse around here. Love every time down top take the mic, he just can't speak for nothing. It's just <laughs> uh basically uh down to take the mic, Bella basically runs through the crowd, attacks them, here comes Sammy, six man tag six man tag match play a play later on in the night. Ricochet complains about play a player. Logan Paul complains about uh Ricochet complains about the finish to his match with the brass knuckles. Pierce said he can't do anything. Here comes Gable. Shoes. Riddle, bro, and Tommaso Ciampa all basically this lead to a fatal four-way match. The winner gets a shot at Gunter. Then we get Ricochet, which leads to this match. Uh, good back and forth match. Uh, Ricochet hits a flip to the floor, dives back in to take out Ciampa. Uh, Project Ciampa on Riddle for two. Riddle hits the bro Derek. Gable made the save off the top rope. Chaos Theory on Ciampa for the win at the 10-minute mark. Non-stop action here. One thing that Triple H did actually that day he went against the grain, the hometown guy got a win in this hometown. <laughs> hometown. Shout out to Gable. <laughs> you know, they rarely do that. <laughs> but if you think about it, it works out in the tie again, so he'd be the weakest wrestler in the match. So him losing the Gunther doesn't mean as much as if uh Ciampa lost to Gunther or or Riddle. You know what I'm saying? Guys you actually might give a push. Gable ain't getting no push. I don't know. I I as a solo, other than not just a comedy act, I think eventually he he, he it, it's gonna it, it's it's gonna go there. One thing I'll say I love about Triple H, he is the king of long term storytelling with storyline. It's just like he will act that shit. Yeah. <laughs> he act, but he keeps it fresh though. Long as the shit ain't run, some of the shit be running stale sometimes. But like, long as you keep it fresh, I ain't got a problem with it. Uh, Gay will celebrate. He goes, gets his son, is there. He's carried his son around with him, like Manny Nunes when she retired, basically. What's the name? Uh, Sammy thinks that he has to play peacemaker between Cody and Seth. Seth, because they got beef. Miz said he has, Miz told he got to wait because LA Knight has a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry about that. Nakamura versus Bronson Reed. Uh, Reed misses the tsunami. Kinshasa, 12 minute mark. Shane gets the win here. Uh, I'm tired of seeing them two fight. Like, okay, well, we get it. <laughs> Shin's finally moving on to something new. He'll uh, talk about it in the next show. So. And it's odd because, like, he cheated to win last week, but won clean this week. So we still don't know where he's going. Uh, we talk about Rhea Ripley taking out Raquel Rodriguez. Lower Kaiser coming out for County Locker Room. Maxine Dupree is by herself. Dupree! Said, that, said she's better off with Imperial. She slaps him, and then all this comes out. I know we're challenging for a match. Becky Lynch is here. She's here for a chat too. Everybody here for chats tonight. Uh, she says she's tired of Trish Stratus. Stratus, she said. I'm tired of this feud. She said, we all are. <laughs> we all are. I am too. I really feel like they don't have nothing for Becky Lynch to do. I literally feel like they want to. They're going to put the. Didn't title, I tell you that two they, months they, ago? They're going to put. Didn't the belt, I say that two months ago when they started gonna, doing this? They're going to put the belt back on her, but they. I think they just want to wait. She literally ain't got nothing to do. Right no, now. she don't. She she's getting the championship probably. That's probably from real problem. I wonder how sorry she is she didn't get her one-on-one with Ronda and Mania. Because that was supposed to happen. And then, like, like correspondingly, like, Ronda got from hurt and was off TV. It, she, and then she got pregnant. Yeah, she, she actually, she's not bothered by it. She really? Don't, really? Yeah, like, yeah. she, she, she understands she understand that, like, circumstances prevented it from happening. It ain't like Ronda was like, no, I don't want to fight her like that, so. Uh, basically, she said it's going to be previous generation versus the greatest of this generation. Zoe Stark basically said she don't like you bad mouth and Trish. Becky said Trish is just using her. Using her. Uh, Shayna Baszler comes out there. She's banged up. She says, well, you should see Ronda Rousey. <laughs> she has a mean shine over her she eyes. She did. Too. She had a nice Ooh, mouth. That was real. <laughs> yeah, that was a mouth. <laughs> that was real. That was a mouth. She said she got rid of Ronda at SummerSlam. Becky nodding in approval like, yes, thank you. Uh, she said Bailey like a tough punching bag. Becky like them fighting words. That cute Adam Prince to make a match. So she basically instigated that. Uh, J.D. Madonna is in the back with Finn. No, they go back. Priest basically interrupts and tell him, what's up with you making your own plans later? They argue again about the loss. Loss. Priest said that, uh, better said that the crowd is, that the contract is crowding both of us. Rhea said, y'all need to act like grown-ass men. <laughs> Man, Shannon Baylor versus Zoe Stark. <laughs> so, this is how they just be so thirsty with merchandise. So, Triple H at his press conference said, for those superstars that that didn't get put on the summer sun because you know cup match got took off they said they should use this opportunity to turn lemons into lemonade so becky lynch comes out here with a lemonade shirt on drinking some lemonade during this match spits it out like triple h does with the water with the water <laughs> with the water <laughs> with the water this lead to a match between them uh match was longer than it should have been this match went 13 minutes it's <laughs> A little longer than it should. And then after the end of the match, Becky basically just cheers her with the lemonade. She cheers Shane and like, after that. Uh, Nakamura is getting interviewed backstage when JD is basically beating the shit out of Sami Zayn. He's basically tearing up his elbow. Otis versus Love with Kaiser. Guess who won this match? Guess how long this match was? Love with Kaiser, three minutes. Yeah, 257. Hey, I was down there there. <laughs> They argue over, they are, Seth and Cody arguing again. Sammy ain't clear to compete, so he said it's three on two. Shan said, I'll be your partner. Rollins basically agrees about even checking with Cody Rhodes, because Rollins said, well, basically, it basically might meet three versus one, because I don't trust you. So, <laughs> <laughs> Miz comes out here, and he said he don't get why everybody loves LA Knight. Knight, he said you supposed to introduce yourself when you get here and pay respect to those who come before you. Knight said the battle royal was enough for the introduction. He said, I don't deserve to shake your hand. Miz saying that. He said he's the flavor of the month. He said, Knight, you're just an add to Arab fanboy playing. He said, you're an add to Arab fanboy cop playing in the middle of my ring. That's the <laughs> hey, hey, hey. My name's Puma Aces. <laughs> yeah. He said, you don't want to make this. Dummy. <laughs> He said, you don't want to make this personal, personal. And then Miz talk about what he been doing, talking about having a two-time Grand Slam champion. I'm like, okay, well, that's it. He's like, how about this? How about I spent 20 years making myself the most dangerous man outside WWE. While WWE was been on all the wrong horses, like you, for example. You had a 20-year start, start ahead of me. WWE picked you because you were safe. Yeah, you want a bunch of stuff. I haven't been there yet, but I'm on the rise in your career than the toilet. I'll make you a stepping stone. And I don't mean them little ones down there. They be back to talking jokes about Miz's balls again. So. <laughs> 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 Reason. Reason. And then basically he talks about uh man talk about the main event. Sneaks knife from behind skull crush finale gets turned to a blunt for his trauma. 
Viking Raiders versus your boys is back. They issue a chance. The new day is back. Kofi is back. Back with Xavier Woods. Uh, Viking Raiders lose this match in five minutes. Is, is it bad seconds. that I wanted to see y'all skip? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against the new day, but I wanted y'all skip back. And it's sad because I love the Viking Raiders. Shout out to Ray Rowe, our Cleveland boy. We got in our picture and in our intro. But, God, I hate the direction the career has gone in. I wish they would have left around the same time FTR or whatever. Yeah. See where they are. They might still have their damn name. <laughs> War Machine. Go ahead. I'm sorry. They're interviewing Becky, Becky Lynch backstage, and she said that uh, she took Carolina Riley. She said she got a lot of issues and scores to settle with people. She said she's coming for the man soon. Lynch said, I'm not hard to find. Uh, then we get to our main event. Oh, they're talking about Sonya Deville has a torn ACL, so yep. the division. I heard about that. Champions. You'll have an update on that next week because it actually has an interesting development. And then we get to our main event. We let Before this should even start, let's get to the entry. So Raquel Rodriguez basically comes out here and jumping Rhea Ripley. Now, this is the part that gets me. So Rhea Ripley basically is throwing, like, they break the up, and then she basically just chucks Andy Hartwell, throws her side. She throws Kenneth Ray off to the side to break it up, break it up. And then when they finally get Rhea Ripley back, Kenneth Ray basically spears Rhea Ripley. Now, she's fighting with Rhea Ripley now, and she's getting jumped by her and Andy Hartwell. So now, <laughs> that was just before the match actually started. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Started. Uh... Main event tag match, nice main event tag match. Uh, basically, we get to the end here. Uh, Ron with the Patterson suicide dive that he hit, downward spiral by Priest, shotgun drop kick. I call it the John Woo drop kick. <laughs> drop kick, uh, which he don't do as much. Uh, Cody Cutter, Priest used the briefcase to break that up. Zane jumps Priest, Ron with the super kick to the briefcase to battle face crossroads at 14:22. End of the match, everybody celebrating. Nakamura with a Kinshasa on Seth Rollins in the middle of the ring. The heel turn is official. <laughs> official. He's coming for Seth next. And then basically Rollins and Rose basically reluctantly shake hands at, like, what's the name? So that is Raw for the week. NXT. Yeah, I got to go to NXT. All right. <laughs> you don't up. sound happy about that. No, no. I just, I got to pull it up. That's all. Yeah, it was a down show. Uh. Uh, let's start with Rhea Ripley, Dominic Mysterio. Uh, they talk about how he talk about how Rhea talk about how great Dom is. This lead to Mustafa Ali versus x Uh Good match between these two. A lot of high flying, fast paced back and forth match between these two. Uh, Ali gets the win at the ten minutes with the four fifty. Fifty. Uh, Exxon kind of. He's still beefing with scripts, too. They got to stop trying to make this thing with script. We know it's Reggie. Like, stop trying to push the narrative. Narrative. Gives them problems to find Creed. We get Dana Brooke, who basically wanted to join to do something. So she called out Davenport. Yeah, this leads to a match with Blair Davenport. Blair Davenport beats her in three minutes. It's time to get her back on the road after losing to Raquel. Uh, I mean, Roxanne Perez. Von Breakers, uh, Von Wagner basically said he ready to put a uh, Braun Breaker through a table. Heritage Cup rule matches is here. Uh, uh, Tyler Driver ninety seven is countered, so Bate rolls him up for a win in the fifth round. He wins it two one. Thirteen minutes overall, so Bate is the new Heritage. Uh, what's the name? Tank Ledger and he, uh, Hank Walker basically name they sell Smash Mouth before they get beat down by Scrism. Dijak says he wants a title shot. Wes Lee comes in wants a shot too. Dijak sucker punches uh, Lee. Dragonaw calls out Trick Williams. Trick said he has something to say. He said he don't want to hear from Williams at the Great American Badge. He said Dragonoff ran to the title red and Williams hit him with it. This leads to a match between these two at Heat Wave. Dragonoff said he's going to kill him. Basically, <laughs> Drew Gulak and Charles Dempsey basically are calling them cops and backing out they mad because they got hurt. David Kemp said he's the man. They're looking for toughness. Uh, that's just one. Here comes Josh Briggs and Brooks Jensen. Breaker said he's ready for Wagner. Mysterio gives Perez a pep talk. Then hell comes in as a nervous wreck to meet him. Ray says, I love your heart. I see what you do in the ring and you amazes me. Uh, she asked him. She asked him, she said, do you still love Dominic? Ray was like, I do. That's my son, even though things ain't great with us right now. 
Ray Lee, Chase U comes up and says, Chase U be like, oh my God, that was Ray Mysterio. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, and then Terry's like, yeah, I know. And unlike you, I want throw. And unlike you, he want to throw in the throw in the towel. So she's still mad at Andre Chase for throwing in the towel at the whole matchup they had. Then we get the match between Von Wagner and Braun Breaker. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Breaker gets the win here. Five minute mark. Mark. But after the match though, Wagner puts him through the table though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Schism adds Dax and Tony D'Angelo about the Creed Brothers, which basically teases something for the title coming. Next, we get Briggs and Jensen versus Gulak and Charles Dempsey. Uh, Dempsey and your boy Gabba Gulak get the win here. Gabba Goo! Get the win here. Uh, they have some. Uh, Speaking of which, uh, the originator that is now in New Japan. <laughs> Next, we get. Kiana Jane versus Ivy Nile. Uh, Schism offer a distraction here. Ivy Nile eats a uh, knee to the back of the head. She loses the match at the seven minute mark due to interference. Uh, the Schism, this is going back to what Schism thinking the Creed brothers are actually like the guy behind these blue masks. They are the guy behind the blue mask. They just heartless smile. No, nah, they showed their face. The, yeah. the one time recently when she had called out somebody. Uh, Next, we get uh, Garza and Umberto. They talk about how it was a joke. They want to honor their grandfather reunion. Metaphor come in and said Darm needs the title back for emotional support. Nathan Frazier said they're a Spider Man mean. They already know which cup is real. Tiffany Strand said asked what, they asked her what's next for her, but she talks about clothes because that's her character. Uh, William Tell Lee. Trick Williams running to Wesley in the parking lot, and he told him to tell Hayes to be ready. Williams tells Lee, he said, no, tell him yourself. Self. Uh, North American title match. Dragon Lee versus uh, Dominic Mysterio. Uh, good match. Uh, you know how this go. Uh, Dominic hits a 619. Frost Flash knees. Ripley slides in the title. Ray takes it away. Rhea hits Lee with the women's title. Dominic, Dominic with a Mikunoshu driver, he wins it at 12 minutes. So he retains the title. Of course, he retains due to interference. After the match, Rhea yelling at Ray. Here comes the Laura Valkyrie. She comes in and sends Rhea to the floor. The hero stand tall to end the show. So that's the end of NXT. All right, let's get in into Dynamite from August 9th. It came to you live from Nationwide Arena, which is in Columbus. Uh, my notes I have this from since Dayton, Ohio. Obviously, they have never been to Ohio, or they would know that. Yeah. <laughs> Nationwide is where it's the Columbus Blue Jackets play. Anyway, moving on to this episode, uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society starts to show out with all members, including pregnant ones. So Ty was in appearance, and they all had their words they had to say at Jericho before walking off on him and leaving the group individually. Last one being Sammy, who said, unlike the rest who all quit, he said, I'll still be here for you if you ever change this new attitude that you've had, you've recently been on, but um, I'm basically following the same way they are. Uh, post break, Don Callis comes up to a distraught Jericho and tells him uh, he, he's sorry if he caused any of that, but he'll be looking for his answer next week. Next up is the Hardys versus the Young Bucks. Um, the Young Bucks take this one via BTE trigger to Matt Hardy at 11 minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, post match, uh, they show a little respect to them before FTR comes out and it's official with the face to face. Uh, there will be a tournament um, that was announced uh, for a four-way women's title match at All In um, tournament. You know, for the um, competitors, she is already in, uh, so uh, she doesn't get a first. Round match. She, she basically doesn't have to have a first round match. She gets to buy whatever you want to say. Um, yeah. Moving on from there, as my mic messed up, but my bad. Uh, moving from there, MJF and uh, Adam Cole bond again. This time they go to a trampoline park, which really upset MJF because he thought they was about to go get some some bitches or something like that. He said, "Where the broads at?" Yeah. And then when they no. showed <laughs> when they showed on there at a trampoline park, he looked at so distraught, like, yeah, <laughs> hurt feelings. So. Uh, they uh, have a video game ball pit and dodgeball. MGF liked the idea of dodgeball and saw some little kids with dodgeballs in slow motion. Uh, he yelled at one that I slept with your mom. Then yelled at another one, you're adopted. Uh, Cole came up to say MGF can't do that. And a young, a young girl says that 
Um, the adults can't be at the trampoline park. And Cole had to hold MJF back from beating her up. Um, they let out one more insult from MJF, and he chucked the ball at her. I think she flicked him off is what it was. Uh, next up, Blackpool Combat Club. Um, been a super violent tear recently, so they have, they're happy to have hurt the best friends of Pac. FTW title match next up with the whole fucking show, Rob Van Dam. Uh, coming out to respect Walk by Pantera. I love that uh, Tony Khan pays the, the exorbitant rights fees uh, to get the right songs on. So that's pretty fucking dope. Either way, this match didn't go how I wanted to. So I wanted Rob Van Dam to win it, and he didn't. Jack Perry won it uh, uh, because they ended up hitting a ref during um, one of the aspects of the match. Uh, they get back in the ring, a five-star Fox pass. Hits Perry for a no count. Another rough comes in. Perry sends Van Damme into a chair that was already set up in the corner and gets the pin in nine minutes, 22 seconds. Uh, then he's arguing after that that he's going to retire uh, the title. Uh, the Lucha Brothers uh, promise revenge of Blackpool Combat Club. Next up, coming out for the promo this time, are Adam Cole and MJF for a chat. MJF um, says he's seen the footage by him saying that everyone in the Midwest is dead, but that footage was heavily doctored. He said, may God strike him down dead if he wasn't saying it isn't true, but his favorite place in the country is the Midwest. Paul and MJF cringe, but MJF survives, leaving Cole to promise that he'll take the world's title from him at, uh, at all in. Um... And Jeff says, so you want to make this a little battle? And then he proceeds to, like, go off on him and gets dogging him, right? And just calling, like, just, just basically taking a shots at him, calling him skinny, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And then he has to call us in the restaurant, like, like, Max, it's not what I meant. <laughs> like, he was salty, but then he's basically just telling him, like, you know, so you gave me the title match. I want to give you something. Since we had this good friendship recently, but we didn't end up beating FTR, I got the second best thing. Spent a lot of time in ROH. A lot of the best moments of my career happened in ROH. I am the only uh, three-time ROH world champion. He says, so they have tag team titles there, so why not? And on the pre-show, I got us this match from Tony Khan. We take on Aussie Open for the ROH Tag Team Championships and met some of the great tag teams that also held those tag team championships. MJF is down for it, so they're both doing double duty on the all-in pay-per-view because this match is official. Um, move on from there. They have a recap of Collision. Then we have the Lucha Brothers versus Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, in this match, it went about 13 minutes. Uh, we had a point where Penta and Moxley, um, they come in, chop it out for a long time until a fear factor hits Moxley. Uh, the spike fear factor is broken up, but Willa Yuta tries to interfere, only get cut off by Alex Abrahantes. Moxley used it to distract the roll Penta up, who got unmasked somehow. And him having to cover up his face, they pulled the tights to get the victory in the pin roll. Or well, the victory roll in the pin, I should say. Uh, Kenny Omega has a sit down with Jim Ross next week that we'll get to on the next show. Next up, Swerve, Swerve Strickland comes out with the mogul embassies for a chat. Talk about how he went to uh, Seattle last week when they went and beat up Nick Wayne at his training place. Uh, with the proof of point because they're above the law. AR Fox wants Darby Allen. Uh, out here right now. So Q Darby Allen saying that he wants the whole story. Allen lived with Fox and his demons, but now Fox has some new friends. Well, Allen has some friends of his own, so the lights dim down. Sting's back. Um, everyone but Sting and Swerve leave the ring, allowing Sting to hit a batch of Swerve's ribs. Uh, and then they point to the sign at All In. Um, so next up is announced that they're going to have a coffin match. Sting and Darby Allen versus AR Fox and Swerve. Next up is a women's, your main event. Let me shout this out real quick. AEW, in the last two to three weeks, have had maybe four or five different women's matches as main events. Shout out to them because you know that was a pet peeve for me for a long time. And I like if it's a show that has titles on it, a title match being in the main event. And some of those main events have been title matches for Sheeta, the one where she won it, and also this one where she's defending it against Anna J. Um, Sheeta retains here. I'm uh, not to see Anna J getting the final chance to step up prior to this match. She cut a promo talking about Sheeta was her very first match in AEW back when she used to come out with the gimmick when she looked like she was like a magician's assistant. And, <laughs> and then her 
her very first match basically against Sheeta again. Another her first major match was when she first joined uh, Jericho Appreciation Society. So this is her third time coming up against her. And she's saying basically every time I'm stacking up more, I'm stacking up more. Uh, you used me the first two times with your experience over mine. So now I'm good enough to beat you is what she was saying. Ha! I laugh at that. Because she wasn't. Uh, she got beat with the fact that Earl. They got a two count followed by a katana to retain at 8 minutes and 44 seconds. Okay. Despite Angelo Parker trying to interfere, and somehow he failed. That, I'm not shocked. That was dynamite. Uh, right quick, since you did double duty, I'll do double duty for you. Let's jump over to AEW Rampage. And this is from August 11th. Um, this show for Rampage started with Brian Cage taking on Darby Allen, the big hoss taking on the skinny man. Uh, this one ended when Brian Cage tried to hit a F10, which he hit a few minutes earlier in the match. Tried to hit the second one, but Darby Allen reverses it into a small package for the victory at 10 minutes and 46 seconds. Post match, Luchasaurus comes in and goes after Darby Allen with the reverse choke slam. Darby Allen has a lot of pots on the fire right now. He has that coffin match he has coming up, and then I wouldn't doubt at all in he's going to have a match for the TV title against Luchasaurus slash uh, Kristen Cage. Yo! If you look into my eyes, that whack ass shit. Let me stop. <laughs> Good call. <to> that. <laughs> anyway, um, he's probably going to have a match at All In <laughs> the next week against Kristen Cage. You don't Let hate me get that a song. You don't hate that song. Every time you sing it, you don't hate it. You secretly like the song. <laughs> I, it, it's just so cheese. I can't help it, though. Uh, anyway, so. Um, Scars never healed. <laughs> uh, Britt Baker uh, was ready to face the Bunny next week, even though they're friends. She wants the uh, title back more than ever, ever, though. And so it's time for her to be a bully next week. Eddie Kingston is still in the G1 Climax Tournament. So are the wrestlers oh, okay. so, uh, uh, involved on a different level. He wants to defend an NJPW strong title in AEW. Is what he was saying. International TV title match. Johnny TV taking on Orange Cassidy. Uh, you know, this one was all over the ring. Um, Orange can high fly when he wants to. That high flying basically all uh, uh, Johnny TV does for the most part. Orange can do whatever he wants to do. Uh, this one comes down to a neck breaker, takes Cassidy down, but Johnny TV misses with the super station, which is basically Starship Payne. He's changing because they're on TV. Name, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so they, uh, they go back up with the super Spanish fly. It's broken up. Cassidy hits a tornado DDT and then the orange punch. Beach break to retain the title. Nine minutes, 34 seconds. Currently on the longest winning streak in AEW of any uh, current wrestler. Uh, the next match, Aussie Open, is a squash match. Beats the Outrunners, uh, some jobber guys. Uh, with the Coriolis for the finish. Two minutes and 11 seconds was the match. Then we get our main event. Once again, another women's main event. This one on dot. That's two this week. Um, women's title number one, uh, number one contender tournament. First round, Soraya taking on Sky Blue. This is basically to see who gets the spot in the four way all in. Uh, this match goes nine minutes twenty two seconds. Sky Flaw is broken up, so Sky Blue settles for a roller for two. Super kick by Soraya gets another two count. Uh, they get tied up in their legs. Blue finally makes it to the ropes. Uh, she grabs a cold blue, but Storm. Um, Tony Storm has the referee distracted, allowing Ruby Soul to get in and spray paint. Uh, Soraya hits uh, whatever she used to call the rampage. I'm not sure what it's called now. Uh, Excalibur called it the good night. That's basically what he said. Uh, and she got the pin with that. Nine minutes, 22 seconds was that match. And that was rampage. It's not a bad name for a finish. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> uh, that was rampage. That's a good finish name for a finish. Uh... Let's go into SmackDown. All right. So let's start it off. First match is Oscar versus Charlotte. Charlotte. Uh, basically, you go back and forth. Oscar with a kick to the head. Uh, Charlotte with the spear. Figure four is loaded, but here comes damage control out here. Distraction let Oscar get a kick to the head. Barely distraction let Oscar hit a cold breaker. And then uh, E.O. Sky basically miss, hits a drop kick on both of them for no contest. Contest. So, I I don't know. At least Charlotte didn't beat Oscar again, I guess. Because <laughs> you know that happened. Uh, we look at Jimmy basically costing Jay the title. Then we get a video of Santo Escobar versus Austin Theory because they have a U.S. title match later, than, later that night. Escobar says he's ready to win a U.S. title. Theory jumps from behind, slams an anvil case on his leg before LWO makes the save. 
Karen Cross said he wants to hurt AJ Styles and tease his, like, gaining disciples. So I think he's going to try to form, like, something to go against uh, the OC, basically. Which leads to a match between AJ Styles and Karen Cross. Uh, Chen and Scarlett are here. Here. Uh, get to the crux of this match. Uh, Styles with a springboard 450. Scarlett puts the foot on a rope. Chen goes after her. She gets dropped to pop back up, pulls over the announce table. That distraction allows Styles to hit a style clash at the 10 minute mark. Again, right. another one of those matches where things start to pick up at the end. Even though Cross lost when he promised he's going to have people come help him, Styles feel like he won the feud at the end, but this was the best match they had. Karen Cross, since he got called up, had like an 80% loss rate. It's <laughs> 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 just see him just constantly losing matches. Uh, next, we get Edge. Edge said he has a big moment in Toronto, but he want to be here in Calgary as well. He has a match next week, and he wants that final match to be against Sheamus. What you might not, what you might not know is the reason is that Sheamus is the real reason he's here again. He said because Sheamus was the one who lit a fire underneath him during their Celtic workout, uh, warrior workout together, which is a YouTube channel, like, which he actually does every superstar. He does their workout, how they do it. Exactly. So you name a superstar, they've been on there. He had Dirty Dime on there. He's talking about, he's talking about his gear, basically saying, like, you need to wear long socks because I wear long socks in the joint. Like, shit like that. <laughs> uh... Worked out with Seth Rollins, uh, Finn Balor, you name it, he had them on there. He talked about their cheat meals. Like, <laughs> some of the cheat meals, some of these people is weird. Becky Lynch cheat meal is toast. I don't know if that a cheat meal or not. Uh, Rey Mysterio said his cheat meal, he eats a shit ton of McDonald's. Big Macs. <laughs> his cheat meal. <laughs> Damian Priest baked, so I, that's something we didn't know neither. <laughs> like, yo, big six, five, two hundred. 50 pound ass bacon cupcakes and shit. Okay then. <laughs> uh, <coughs> he said, Ed got Seamus on the mountain bike. Seamus looked like a goof. Ed fell off his bike. He was fine enough after the crash, so he went white come wrestle again. And then he called Seamus to find out if he was ready to come back. He said they trained together. He need an answer. I'll come to Brawling Brutes. They showed footage of Ed falling off the bike and getting back up. Ed puts up a picture of Seamus sitting on the children's bike with Seamus saying that he has a weird chin. They talk about how he worked at a bar in 2004 when he met Edge and Edge was the only wrestler that gave him the time of day. Edge basically offered the challenge again, saying we even have some alcohol. We can have a post-match uh, drink after this. Seamus basically accepts. Uh, yeah, no, I don't want to mention that, but I guess it was that racist 70th birthday. So... Enough about that. Uh, we talking about eyes not hot? Yeah. Piece of shit. We talking about uh, his whole album. <laughs> uh, we get Top Dollar versus your boy L.A. Knight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two my aces. Uh, basically, he wins this match to BFT two minutes. Postman, he said it doesn't matter where you go because everyone says his name. Escobar is clear, but he he can barely walk out the room. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits are having a drink. Lashley said he sees talent in them. I won't call it untapped potential, but now I see what y'all can do. The sky's the limit. And he said that uh, SmackDown is ready to see some new people run the place. They over there drinking uh, champagne. What's the name? Looking sharp. So I think they are about to. This is a hill turn. Uh, our U.S. title match, Santos Escobar versus Austin Theory. Uh, basically, Escobar takes the knee out again during the entrance, which means Escobar can't defend the title, but we do have a replacement instead. Guess who that replacement is? It is one, Rey Mysterio. Oh, uh, basically, Sunset Bomb sends Theory to the corner, Rey for Enziguri, 619. Nine, but Theory catches it. A town down don't work because Theory back give out six one nine to the brink. Springboard splash. Ray gets the win in the title at two minutes and forty seconds, which I think they said was like he had 
he ended he had the longest record i think bef like a day before like singles titles it was previously held by goldberg before he won so ray was the official holder now till he won the title so we don't know who got that record now <laughs> now that's crazy <laughs> it been that long since ray won a singles title <laughs> yeah. uh celebration next we get the bloodline Bloodline, this is uh, your main event segment because every time you have someone with the bloodline, it's always going to be the main event of the show, usually. Uh, Jimmy is here. They said Jimmy needs to acknowledge Roman Reigns. Jimmy ain't here, and Reigns asked where he at. He said he spoke to Jimmy, and Jimmy was very salty. <laughs> Heyman said these words. Uh, Jimmy comes out. He tells Reigns, and Reigns tells him not to listen to the fans. He said he owed... Rain said he owed Jimmy one so name, whatever he wants. He said a new car, a yacht, jet is done. Hammond don't seem sure. Jimmy said he don't want none, anything from Reigns. Reigns, he said that uh, Reigns thinking means Jimmy want power and stay. He said he want to be a new right-hand man. Jay interrupt. Jay wants to know why he did it. He said basically because of our love for you, which Roman is just in the background just laughing like hysterically. He said, because if you were the one, what would have happened to the Uso? If you were the one became a tribal chief, you'd been more corrupt, just like he is, basically, is what he was saying. Jimmy, like, I ain't going to let you turn to something terrible like Roman, and I understand if you're done with me. He said, I'm going to close my eyes. He waiting for the super kick. Super kick. Kick. Jay just walks away. Roman started laughing and saying, Jay going to screw this up by being a high head. He said, this is about Naja and him, but he super kicks Rain. Solo goes after Jay. He eats the super kick. Rain with a Superman punch. Rain Spear get cut off by another super kick. Jay hits that weird looking spear <laughs> again, again. And then as he walks up the ring, he super kicks his brother. <laughs> Says, I'm off the bloodline, SmackDown, and WWE. Deuces, oos. That's what he says as he leaves. So, uh, basically setting up the blood feud because they had they was on the interview with uh, Ariel Hawani. They said that their dream after beat of have a one-on-one -on -one match at Mania. Mania, so I assume they're going to try to scratch the top. According to the press conference, so they're like the bottom of the dirt in and of this damn thing. <laughs> Dang. And they immediately played into it because they immediately put him on the alumni page like soon after he quit. <laughs> Look at like, come on. I see, I'll be like, dang, y'all see a Jim Elvin Nightheart. I'm like, why y'all got Jillian on the alumni page? <laughs> Jillian was an important announcer for them. Before she became the thing with that thing on her face that the boogeyman ate. <laughs> that wasn't her. Wait, that Jillian? I'm Jillian thinking Hall, of Jillian yeah. Michaels. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, her. She's on a low not pay. Okay. Like, what if we gonna have a her? Her. Jillian Michaels? No. Hall. Uh, the one that other was the bad singer. Other than that, there wasn't one to have. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but on, I'm not paid. I just seen her, Jim at Jim uh Jim the Anvil and Jimmy Uso, and I'm like Huh? I mean, Jay was my phone. I'm like, huh? No. Like, so that basically was the end of SmackDown. All right, let's get into Collision. Uh, AW Collision uh, for past Saturday. Uh, th this one, uh, let's let's start off with this one. Uh, so Tony Schiavone's in the ring and he brings out Ricky Starks. And, uh, you know, let, let's go ahead and start this one here. Uh, this is our Tony Schiavone moment of the week. Call me right about to leave. You said Tony Schiavone, I'm like, no, I think I need to stand around. Fuck Tony Schiavone! Skiv on, skiv on, skiv on. We haven't said that. Tony, Tony, Tony. This is a, 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 a cumulative. This is cumulative because he's been taking a lot of abuse recently when he's yeah. been in either the backstage role of interviewing people. Yeah. Uh, so he interviewed, like, uh, Bullet Club Gold, and they all finished off the segment with the guns up, but they're all in his face, almost like they're digging in his nose. So that was that was funny. Uh, he catches abuse from everybody left and right. Tony Storm barked at him because he's still sorry that she lost a women's title recently. And she's walking brown backstage, like, all accosted like a Karen holding her chest. <laughs> uh, she's also done that to the Lexi Nair recently. During his interview with Ricky Starks here in the opening sequence of the show, he brings him down to the ring. Tony's asking him, like, why are you beating a 70-year-old legend such as, Ricky's, uh, such as Ricky Steamboat with his own belt in the title, with his own uh, uh, belt in the ring? He said, well, because he did something wrong. 
and is in this world you have to learn there is cause and effect. He caused me to lose that in the match, so by effect, I had to beat his ass. <laughs> I love Ricky Stone. And then he pre- he proceeded that with fire, bro. He proceeded to shit. He proceeded to shit on Tony at the same time. I can't remember exactly what he had said. He had called him like, "Is that like I don't want to hear no dumbass questions about it from you or some shit like that?" He had said. Uh, Tony later called abuse in the night from um, Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, Firehouse Hobbs came out and said, you know, I've been on a loser streak recently. I went back to the Book of Hobbs in order to find me inspiration. And it told me I need to be redeemed. So that means I need to call out the Redeemer. <laughs> he said, so it's time to call out the Redeemer. As soon as he did that, he, he looks at Tony in his face like, Tramp! <laughs> so like, the, but Tony plays it. Like, all right, buddy. <laughs> he just walks off. So shout out to all the abuse Tony's been taking late, lately. He got barked at by Taz, and he didn't even deserve it because he was kind of talking over Taz. Taz got pissed off because they were talking about the FTW title at the time. So that was another incident. So shout out to Tony for taking some abuse recently. So he deserved his uh, fuck Shivani moment. We love you, Tony. Everybody else has been trying to say fuck Shivani this week, it seems like. Anyway, um, so Ricky we Starks, do it out of love. Bro. Ricky Starks is suspended for 30 days. It's basically why he was brought out to the ring for his uh, antics after the CM Punk title match um, from the week prior's collision. Uh, but he said, I'll still be around talking shit because I got a manager's license. Uh, from there, we have the acclaimed. Uh, taking on the Iron Savages. This is basically them taking on some jobbers. Uh, Mass Caster hits uh, the Iron Savages Boulder and Jameson. That what one gets a scissor me timbers. Uh, the other one catches. They catch Stereo Famous at the same time as the Acclaim pick up the win. Eight minutes and forty seven seconds. Uh, next up is Veal Pack to Adam Cole. Uh, working with and then we're working against MJF soon. Mercedes Martinez and Diamante taking on Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander. Uh, in this match with Chris Statlander, she got distracted by Martinez. They gave Martinez and Diamante the early lead in uh, coming out uh, working well as a team during this match. This match reminded me a lot of like. Uh, old New Japan matches when they used to just like openly cuss where the microphone can hear you because at one point in time Diamante hits Willow Nightingale with the drop kick and causes her to like roll to the outside of the ring through the bottom rope and as soon as she stands up she gives her a double bird like fuck you and you can hear her on the mic and then like a <laughs> uh, no, uh, Nigel McGinnis like acknowledges like yeah she gave her a stern warning there and <laughs> some of you say it or whatever but anyway uh, back to the match to take a break to come back. Uh, Nightingale finding her way out of trouble. A spine buster. Uh, it's enough to bring Statlander back in to clean house, including drop kicks all around. Nightingale comes back in. Uh, but the villains get knocked to the outside. Nightingale and Statlander go to the outside. Martinez hits a razor's edge and tosses Diamante onto them. Almost fell short with that one. Uh, back in the ring, Nightingale pounces Martinez but gets sliced bread by Diamante. Statlander, fisherman driver, and Diamante gets decked by Martinez. Nightingale sits down for a sunset flip, and Martinez turns her over and gets the pin uh, with assistance from Diamante on the leverage. Eight minutes and 45 seconds, so we'll see this feud between these four ladies continue. Uh, Tony Storm is out for a chat. Glad to have Soraya uh, and the women's title match are all in because they can keep things straight. Now, if the interviewer will stop uh, messing with Storm when she's in a vulnerable state, things will be great. Storm promises to have her escorted out. And then as, next, as Lexi keeps talking, she has to duck and shoot being thrown at Tony, uh, Tony Storm and decides to throw a heel at her next. Uh, next up, Samoa Joe. We have a match this week that's uh, surprisingly was longer than last week's collision match. I, we should talk about collision, too. Last week's collision. I forgot about that. Uh, it's not important. We'll move on. Uh, everything talked about there plays in it this week, as we talked about. As you can tell from Ricky Stark coming out in the opening match and him beating Ricky, as I said, beating Ricky Steamboat with his own belt. He lost the main event last week um, for the Real World Champion Championship against CM Punk. In that main event. Oh, also Samoa Joe. I didn't tell you this because I forgot to talk about Collision because we started off with SummerSlam. We didn't talk about Collision last show. Last Saturday, the Saturday before the prior one, I'll talk about now it's Collision. Just want to get this one from you real quick. So Samoa Joe faced Serpentico. Take a guess at how long that match was. So probably like 30 seconds. No, seven. Damn. He literally. Kicked him in the corner, Seven? wrapped him up, and he tapped out. Oh. 
fast. It was that fast. Oh. This week one was only a minute and 17 seconds. <laughs> Joe. But at least it was longer than that. Last week he made Light work for Joe. Light work. Light work. <laughs> Last week he uh, threatened Punk and challenged him to a world title match for that World's World Championship at All In. I remember that. This week after the match, uh, um, he basically chucked out this guy in a minute and 17 seconds. He called out Punk again, referring to him as a coward and says, you don't even have the courtesy of telling me uh, if you accept the match, and now since you won't respond to me, it's time I convince you. Um, next up, Christian Cage comes out for a Yo! chat. Uh, we're not doing it twice. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Scars never healed. Cage comes in. Uh, he said he's the biggest family man. Uh, well, he pays calls for the biggest family reunion he's ever been a part of. Everyone in North Carolina uh, is related, is what he was saying, calling okay. him Hicks. Uh, last week's show, this is a funny part by him I have to mention right quick. It was basically funnier than this one. Uh, he, he came out with his daughter, right? And he was, Yeah, he was talking to Tony Giovanni backstage, and he came out oh, with his look, daughter. Give, um. And then he was like, his daughter was like, Daddy, Daddy. So I pulled in his tail while he was talking. He was like, he was like what, honey? And she was like, um, she asked, I can't remember if she asked for something to drink or like ask because she hold like the title belt or something. And he was like, no. No, that's okay, honey. Why don't you go get some of drink over there, off stage, right? Follow that man. And he pointed off stage, and she walked off. And as soon as he got back in the mic, he was like, I want her to escort her outside the arena. She has no access backstage. She's not allowed back here. <laughs> Dang, his own daughter? His own daughter. And then from there, uh, Nigel proceeded Why? to claim him to be the father of the year and shit after that. <laughs> it was funny. Oh, Lord. All right, so anyway, this week he's uh, running down Michael Jordan. He says, compared to Ma- Michael James... Uh, uh, LeBron James they compare uh, Ric Flair to himself talking about no one respects them <laughs> uh, but they all respect him and also of all nobody respects Darby Allen. Darby Allen comes out so he's a half dude inside yeah, Darby Allen dude got a lot of lot of well tied in <laughs> where everybody be for Darby Allen <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's coming after Christian Cage the TNT title well, that's why um, then Christian title dang ain't even losing food he, he was, it was, <laughs> Darby Allen didn't come out but Darby Allen had something to do with what Christian Cage was talking about this caused Arn Anderson to come out who ah. If you remember, was left on a pool of his own blood yeah. by Christian back in the past. Mm-hmm. He basically comes out and says, I used to feel this arena back in the day. That's why I'm here. Shout out to all these people. I'm sure they're tired of hearing your shit. And since I can't wrestle no more, I'm going to send somebody down there who can, which was his son, who proceeded to get his ass whipped by Luchasaurus oh. and then lose this match. Five, <laughs> five minutes and 22 seconds. Damn, Arn. Uh, Post match, Chris, Christian's father of the year for, for getting his daughter out from that environment. You're not the good father of the year for letting your son get beat down like that. Uh, Post match, uh, Darby <laughs> Allen. When I say that, by the way. Post match, Darby Allen uh, for the run in with the skateboard. Allen threatens to do something rather uh, painful with the skateboard than challenges Christian to a match next week. Christian is in, so is Allen. He promises to beat them both. Uh, I talked about the Paralysis Hop segment. Uh, next up, Jim Ross comes out prior to the main event. Uh, main event was given a long time. We had this one about uh, 30 minutes. It doesn't go exactly that, but close. Uh, CM Punk and FTR versus the House of Black for the House of Black's uh, Trios no Championships. Uh, this one, they made it seem like they had a chance, but they really did not expect the House of Black to retain here. Uh, and they did. This is how it broke down in the end. Punk uh, tries for a top row elbow, gets a two count. They get a quick breather, Hardwood, Brain Busters, Matthews, Black, and then Punk uh, kick each other and they had to leave everyone down. A top row headbutt it hits King. Um, then Samoa, as Punk's on the outside, you know, holding his knee, Samoa Joe comes up out of nowhere, chokes him out, so that takes him out Jesus. back in the ring. Uh, there's a uh, distraction by Julia Hart, which allows uh, Brody King to hit a giant lariat to retain the titles at 26 minutes and 55 seconds this match went. And that was the end of collision. So they're bringing back a badass uh, Joe that just runs through people. Early Impact Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing so, but I don't think he's going to win that title at all in. But I hope it's a good match, though. He's not being Punk? No, I don't see it. Uh, I think what I think should happen is Punk should hold it until eventually he ties back up with MJF. And MJF takes it from him to, uh, to uh, unify the titles because he's not the real world champion. I don't give a fuck if he is pinned or not. You guard yourself to lose that title. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. All right, we're going to go to Monday Night Raw. We're getting to this week so we can get out of here. We're going to start. Oh, okay, hold on. Oh, that's going hit the wrong thing. Yeah, there we go. We're back. 
There we go. We're back. All right. We're going to start this off with Judgment Day. Again, minus Finn Balor. He's not here again. Uh, they agree it's been a communication problem. Priest said as long as he has a briefcase, they dictate what's going on around here. And then he was like, you know what? He was like, you know what? He should be here. And Rhea was like, Damien, don't do this. He like, no. Like, everybody knows something wrong with Judgment Day. He's like, everybody see it. <laughs> see it. See it. He should be out here. <laughs> out here. He's the leader. He should be out here. Uh, basically, he's not happy with Balor. He's not happy with Balor. JD comes out, and Priest tells him to be careful. He has a message from Balor. He said, don't worry about JD. He said, don't worry about me. He said, worry about Sammy and Cody. Ripley don't want to take orders from anybody. Dominic gets booed out the building. By the Despite it being part of North America, he said that. <laughs> he like, since North America is part of Canada, I'm probably the greatest champion of Canada, too. <laughs> like, okay, let yourself get booed even more. Uh, Zane come out here. This leads to a little one-on-one uh, -on -one match between them. Uh, Sammy gets the win with the Haluva kick at 11 minutes. Finn comes out here for a distraction with, uh, for a two, but it didn't work. Pierce said he's ready to strip Chelsea Green of the titles. This is the part that's funny. She was like, she's like, I'm going to threaten to call human resources. He like, so what? He like, you, you, you've been calling my bosses all your time about my phone. He's like, so what? <laughs> she like, we're going to have, she like, we're going to have talent auditions. Then I'm going to audition tag partner. Katara Chance and Kane Carter said, well, as soon as you find a new partner, we won't first shot. Piper never come in here basically. Wham, chance in the face, and basically said, I'm your new tag partner now. She's like, well, I was going to have, she's like, no. I said, I'm your tag partner now, and takes the title. <laughs> takes the title. Uh, next, Cody said he's ready for Finn. Uh, Imperium out here, Gunner stand on the announce table, said that he has worked hard to beat that title. He's looking forward to coming to Canada. He said he walked the streets of Winnipeg this morning. He figured out why nobody likes it here. <laughs> here he said Chad impressed him last week he's an Olympian but Gunner achieved more in a year than he has his entire career he said Gunter's on the clock in less than a month he'll be the longest reigning champion Gable said he's been looking for a chance for 10 years now so we get Gable versus Giovanni Vinci uh, Gable wins this match in 5 minutes after the match Otis basically is like mocking Gunter so he said he wants uh, Gunter said he wants Otis Gunter wins this match Matt, uh, Priest and Balor arguing backstage, but Ripley yells at them. Uh, Balor said he gotta get back his instinct, he get back to being Cody. Uh, Drew gets interrupted by Riddle, who said they can be a tag team. They have a match against the Viking Raiders. Raiders, and they asked Drew about being his partner. Drew said he'll consider it. We get the match between the Viking Raiders and Drew and Riddle. This match lead, uh, Floating Bro to the Claymore. They get to win at 9 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, we get Rhea Ripley versus Andy Hartwell. Uh, Ripley wins in 3 minutes. Shannon explains his attack last week. He speaks Japanese and then switched to English, saying that he wants the title. Rollins said, I didn't like that, but if you want a shot, all you have to do is ask. I'm a fine champion. You can have a title shot whenever. Ever. They shake hands and Nakamura says something. Rollins turns to face him. He eats another Kinshasa. We get Trish versus Becky Lynch. I hated this. So basically, this feud basically went to them brought all the way backstage. Feud still there in. Becky basically gets well out because Zoe Stark comes out of nowhere. Trish, we get Trish and Becky in a cage match. Cody versus Finn is your main event. Uh, Cody gets the win at the 14 minute mark. And after the match, they basically beat down everybody in the match showing that they are strong. All the tension between them has been worked out. Uh, next, we're going to go to NXT. Uh, probably going to cut this down, too, because I got to shoot out here for like yeah, 10 minutes. Got, I know. We got to get out. Let's do get it. Out. All right. Man, we get Schism and uh, Tony Stacks. Uh, Tony D'Angelo gets the win. Retain at the 13 minute mark. Please get rid of schism already. Uh, Hayes is signed a bunch of stuff when uh, basically Lee basically says, You're too uh, you're too busy. He said, Since you won, so sign a contract at Heatwave, we'll take care of that. 
Blair Davenport versus Dana Brooke. Blair Davenport wins. Dana Brooke about to turn heel. Who cares? Exactly. Won't help her career. Trick Williams versus Gabba Gulak. Gabba Goo. Loses in four minutes to Trick Williams. <laughs> I talked that one. <laughs> Dabba Kato is back. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest here. Yeah, hey, it's all right. Vera Corman I come, prefer it. Vera Corman come for a chat. He said that the lightning that's T-Line was, was, is a bunch of soft bitches. Von Wagner comes out here and he tells Von. He's like, go ahead and talk. He's like, you know what? No, don't talk. Von Wagner got his ass. Von was like, look. He like, <laughs> he like, I don't care about you. He said, you can bring one. He said, you can bring any of your bad gimmicks. He said, you can bring Happy Corbin. You can bring Sad Corbin. You can bring Bum Ass Corbin. You can bring, Corbin. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring even Bum Ass Corbin. <laughs> like, oh, my wife never hit the rope. <laughs> <laughs> he said you're going to be able to This is his best promo ever. Let's earmark this as a moment in time. This is his best promo ever. That was hilarious. The first time he talked. He said you could bring he said you could bring bum ass for him. <laughs> <laughs> so to our main event Hell with Dyad nah. versus Wes Lee. Wes that Lee, was funny. Wes Lee gets the win here, so he's facing in Hayes for the title. Great match between these two. Uh Valkyrie and Dragon Lee are ready next week for the tag match. Lee said Valkyrie is... <laughs> so she said, we need to be in sync just like they are. He is like, uh, Dragon Lee, like, I'm sorry I'm spoken for. <laughs> She's like, no, not like that. Like, in terms of being in sync like that. Uh, we get Joe Carter versus Tyler Bate. Jo Dabakato will attack Tyler Bate at four minutes. Uh, we get JC J versus Thea Hale. Jane gets to win at the eight minute mark. Uh, Tiffany Strand will be back next week. Wesley basically, Wesley cut a good promo too. So Hayes said he about to turn. He said he said you about to Hayes like you about to turn me back into the old me, into the old me. And uh, basically Lee said he heard all this before. He said he he said everybody said he's gonna be a failure after his tag partner got released. Everybody said he's gonna be a failure when uh, he won that North American title. He said he done everything that he can. He can, and then he said that he stumps on the table. That's the final segment between them two, so that is the end of the next tape. All right, let's get into AEW Dynamite from Wednesday, August 16th. That came to you from the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. I actually have been outside of the Bridgestone Arena when I went to Nashville like three years ago during uh, Pandemic 2020. Uh, so this show starts off with an international title match. Orange Cassidy taking on Willa Yuta. We get a recap from last week where I forgot to mention this. You know they destroyed Sue's van and ran her off. They lay uh, hands on her, thankfully. But Sue uh, brought Orange Cassidy into the match. He jumps off the roof of the van to attack. Eventually, the match you know, scrambles on. Yuta comes out, gives him the double arm DDT on top of it, which startles her. And then uh, Claudio Castagnoli proceeds to, like, he goes to the van, opens the door, like, out. So she just runs off, and then he proceeds to destroy the van, breaking all the windows, setting a uh, barricade through the front windshield. So before getting their victory last week. But moving on from that, uh, Willa Yuta uh, tries to, uh, he ends up, he tries to go for a paradigm shift and set up orange punts. Cassidy uh, can't get the cover. Uh, so he ends up using the seatbelt and he gets a two count and Cassidy rolls him up for the pin 11 minutes 50 seconds uh, Post-match beatdown is on but the best friends and the Luther brothers come in and make the save This causes them to announce at Webley Stadium There's going to be another stadium stampede match with the Blackpool Combat Club and some members to be named later Taking on the best friends and the Lucha brothers um, So basically five on five I believe or six on six one to the other uh, next up, they have a sit-down interview with Kenny Omega. It turns him to it, him talking about Don Callis and how the relationship started. Eventually, he ends up getting jumped by Bullet Club Goat and Konosuke Koteska during the interview. It was a sit-down with him and Jim Ross, and then they end up leaving him choked out with some ring cords and Don Callis yell, yelling in his face about how he called himself the god of pro wrestling. Um, he was taken to the hospital with a show hangman page waiting for him. Some guy comes in and tells him, like, you can't drink beer here. So he pr proceeds to down the beer anyway and then hand it to the guy. Like, here's an empty can, bro. Uh, next up, Don Callis comes out. 
uh, with another painting under his belt. You know, his legendary paintings for Chris Jericho. Uh, this time he wants an answer from Jericho, asking for joining the Don Callis family. Uh, Callis is ready to celebrate. Um, Jericho comes out. <coughs> he said he was going to join. Um, he wanted to join the Callis family. But he said he also wanted to see the picture, though, which made uh, Don Callis nervous. Uh, they pull... They pull the, uh, the blanket off the painting. The painting is basically Don Callis decapitating Jericho's head for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, this leads Callis back pedals really fast. Tries to talk a way out of it. But then people come in and jump him out of nowhere. You get uh, Will uh, Osprey comes in for a super kick on him. You also get Kenosuke Kachetsu coming in to jump Jericho also. Uh, so... He ended up jumping him. We'll get back to Jericho in a little bit. Sammy Guevara comes in with a baseball bat to make the save and run everybody off. But we see where that's setting up, too. Uh, next up, Jack Perry says he's going to retire the FTW title next week. The Gates of, Agony, Gates of Agony take on Nick Wayne and Darby Allen in a tag match. Uh, this leads to Darby Allen finishing off Khan with a coffin drop. Six minutes, 26 seconds. Post-match, Sting pops up on the string because uh, they're starting to get jumped by the rest of the mogul embassy, including A.R. Fox and, of course, Swerve Strickland. They announced the coffin match, Sting, on the on, on the screen, announced the coffin match. And he was kind of acting a little bit like Joker Sting. That was an impact because he had kidnapped Prince Nana. Uh, next up, Adam Cole, MJF. They go to an Outback Steakhouse uh, to plan for Aussie Open. After eating, MJF knows they're done because the best food he ever had. He can show they can beat them, uh, but it's sure... Asking if you sure they could beat the Aussie Open team. Later back at the arena, Cole has a DVD of Crocodile Dundee 1 and 2. And Jeff has a better idea. Kangaroo fighting style. Cole isn't convinced. Um, next up, there's some of Tony Khan's office. And they get yelled at uh, by Tony Khan for hitting double clotheslines on cats backstage. Uh, they showed him in the ring later. It's just basically more backstage hilarity between the two. Once they get in the ring, they also tease. Uh, this also leads uh, Roger Starr more Saudi, of course. He ends up having to ice down his foot later for kicking uh, MJF's Ferrari. Um, back in the ring, he uh, it says, you know what they do when they get into tag team title match for the always titles. Uh, he says the kangaroo kick, and he says no, the double clothesline. He says what's even more important to him is that we're going to face each other for the world title match and how badly I need to beat you for this match. I've won a world title in every company I've ever been in, so this will solidify my time here in AEW. That's how bad I need to beat you. And Jeff proceeds to tell him what led him to being in all um, in AEW at all, him having to send an email to Cody to ask to be on the original all-in show. Um, Cody giving him that spot, and then all he had to do to work to get here, make his eyes bleeding, watching tape over time to be better with his character and such. Hugh also open to come out and jump them both. They run them off, and then uh, uh, Cole teases a super kick on MJF, but they end up hugging each other and uh, walking off. Backstage, Jericho's getting cleaned up from the blood after getting split. By uh by Kenosuke Kateska and Will Osprey earlier, he said you could have had this match back in 2021 at the Tokyo Dome, but you were a coward then. How you attack me? You're a coward now. Now you've opened up the gates of hell. Um, I'm challenging you to a match in front of your friends, your family, and your old lady at All In on your home turf. Um, he walks off from there. Next, we get the worst match of the year: Jeff Hardy versus uh, uh Jeff Jarrett in a Texas Chainsaw Death Match. For some reason, I tried to make this match because it was themed with the video game, the Texas Chainsaw Death, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Death Match. Uh, was tinged with the video game and stuff like that. So they made it like a real dark color, like it had this red theme throughout, and they kept fighting through backstage, and it was just a terrible fucking match. Eventually, before they got down to the ring, somebody ran in acting like uh, a real leather face, ran off uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett's wife, Karen. Oh, slap nuts. It's a wild slap nuts on the loose. <laughs> Didn't let we can do a quick one right there uh, to get out of this. Eventually, this match comes down to who we thought was uh, detained backstage, sat and sing after they jumped him. He comes back out, hits a choke slam on Jeff Hardy, which leads to them just throwing an already bloody Jeff Jarrett on top of him because he was beaten up throughout the match, took his own guitar to the head, but gets the victory here in 9 minutes and 56 seconds to end this terrible, terrible yeah, match. Sucked. I'm talking top three all-time worst matches in AEW history. Then we get our main event. Another main event for the ladies. Uh, this was the women contenders number one number one contender tournament match. Britt Baker taking on the be bunny. Honest, not to shit on them. Go I ahead. like they doing. I like that they doing a win main event. 
the only main event. I'm Actually, I'm sorry. Title. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. That's not I'm the main wrong. event? No, no. Oh. It was the Bucks. It probably should have been. It was the Bucks. I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. I got two matches left. Either way, jump to the end of this match. Sling Blade gets uh, a two count off of a roll up. Britt Baker hits a stomp after that to get the victory. Seven minutes, 36 seconds. So she takes up the last spot in the women's four way, which would be Soraya, Tony Storm, uh, the defending champion, Hikaru Shida, and Britt Baker. Uh -huh. um, the Guns take on the Young Bucks. Did you know? Though they've all been in this company the whole time, like the guns have been there since the beginning of AEW, first time they ever faced each other in four years. Who? Oh. Uh, Bucks versus the guns. Oh. Uh, the Bucks end up winning. Uh, of course they were. Yeah, the Bucks end up winning this match. Um, uh, they use they basically do a roll-up pin to get the victory nine minutes, 25 seconds. Uh, after the match, uh, the Acclaimed had a match before this, but it actually wasn't a match because... The lights went off. They came back on, and then they got jumped by the House of Black. Uh, this is more tying it to remember House of Black was the ones that beat them up, which caused Billy Gunn to retire. They come out with Billy Gunn's boots recently. They jumped them and took the boots, um, split Max Caster, and then hit that um, thing where he tosses one body to the other uh, to Brody King, and he spikes him. Uh -huh. It did that to the other guy and left him out. Anthony Bowens. Yeah, yeah, Anthony Bowens. So they're that probably setting up something for those guys are all in between each other. Also, and your main event. Partner. Oh, that being Billy Daddy ass Mike. Come back at what's the back? Could, could. Um, uh, the guns versus the young Bucks. Bucks win this one in the end, nine minutes, 25 seconds. That was the main event. Post match, That's they get long. jumped by Bullet Club Gold. FTR comes out to run them off, though, because FTR wants the Bucks as clean as they can, so they have no excuses for their match at all in next Sunday. That is the end of Dynamite for this week. It's getting your last show, getting to mine. We can get out of here. All right, uh, so this is the 25th anniversary of his debut, which is, uh, started with the Grayson Waller effect with Santo Escobar and Rey Mysterio, uh, basically it's Grayson Waller trying to stir fire in between, uh, Escobar and Mysterio. It don't work. He's, uh, Escobar says he's angry at Theory because Theory when they took him out. Uh, Escobar, uh, ran some, Derry comes out and talks about how it was unfair. Adam Pearce said, comes out by L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight interrupts and said, Derry called himself the greatest U.S. champion ever, which is interesting because Derry only defended the title once every three months. <laughs> three months. He said, of all due respect to Ray, it don't matter who's the champion because Derry dressed the fight, so how about them for a U.S. title, uh, contender match? Pearce made the match. Uh, Derry gets the win at the 10 minute mark. Also, thanks to interference from the Miz, who basically comes out as a distraction. Still mad about what happened Monday. Monday. Uh, next, we get video of John Cena, Seamus, Natalia, Miz, Charlotte, and Zemi Zane basically saying thank you to Edge. Then we get a video in his career about him as a teenager asking Bret Hart for advice on the talk show. Next, we get Charlie and Bianca Belair versus Damage Control. Dakota Kai is here, coming from the torn ACL. Uh, dang, torn ACL in the WWE Women's Division, crazy. Uh, Bailey introduced Eos Khan, says Toronto isn't used to seeing the champion, which is like, uh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, Charlotte breaks up Bailey's figure four attempt. Belair with a KOD on Bailey. They get to win at 14 minutes. They show respect to each other at the end of the match. End of the match. More wrestlers congratulate Edge. So we're talking about his retirement with Edge going overseas afterwards because he said he would just be there. Bianca Belair gets jumped and they pillinize her knee. The same knee that she hurt at SummerSlam. Yep. Uh, Street Pop versus OC. Me Chan is here with the OC. Uh, sky high net breaker combo finishes uh the OC at three minutes and ten seconds. So basically, they are say they're heel. Basically, three pops basically heel now. Uh, Paul Heyman said he don't like being crushed about the bloodline. Your girl Kayla Braxton talks about hearing rumors, and Paul Heyman was like, "Well, how about a rumor I heard about your family?" He ain't said nothing to that. <laughs> He said, talk about Ed 25 years, or this one be fashion to pay in LA night. He gets a phone call saying Jimmy will be there next week. Then we get Sheamus versus Edge, which is our main event. Then, uh, 
friends are in the front row. Beth Phoenix is there. Edge and family, everybody is friends. They talk about how this could be Edge's possible retirement match. Shaman basically runs over him to start. Then we get an Edge on Matic. Then we get a hot crossbody from Edge. Edge fights from the apron, hits a spear. Drives Shaman to the outside. Edge with a Texas clover leaf. Edge brings out a cross face. <laughs> cross face. Shaman gets superplexed. Execution for a two. White noise. Celtic cross. Shaman with some forearms. Arms. Edge slaps him in the face. Running clothesline. Spirits counter. Shaman hit the bro kick for a 2.99 count. Misses the bro kick. Two more spears. Spears. Edge with another spear. Edge gets the win at 19 minutes. Great match between them two. End of the match. Edge gets all emotional. They hug. And with the power and everything, and that's the end of the show. Next up, we get a rampage um, from yesterday that had another women's main event. So have I not talked about, like, four? So last show, I was wrong thinking of this one. So three out of the four rampages that I've talked about, women's main events. So shout out to them to show some this. love to the women. I am going to show them love Go for ahead. that. But also, I'm going to say this. Is it only, are they main event only because it's the titles? It's a tournament for the titles. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, that's the only women's match in the show. Can you like? I, I'm. It, I mean, I'm, I'm. It is what it is. I know. I'm just. I'm not saying you're wrong for that. I'm just saying like, I, I'm not throwing stones. I'm giving. I'm. I'm. I'm not throwing stones. I'm, I'm just glad they're putting them in. The I'm spot. not throwing. I'm. I'm not throwing. So I'm, you're saying if it wasn't the women's title tournament, 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 that wouldn't be doing that. Matches wouldn't be in main events. Yes and no because I feel like. Some are the deservers. She didn't win in that title over Tony Storm on 200. That. that was a deserving one. No, I, yeah, that one was. Yeah, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about like some of these other matches. I feel like they, they're only probably man venom because it's for the title tournament. Tournament, like. Yeah, you're right because the participants in here like, so in this so match we're Scott, talking about so are. Who they main event did they? They didn't main event theirs, did they? Um, no, no. Who do no? But everybody else in the title. She just had there. like three in the last four weeks. Yeah. Two of them, one was the title win, one was the title defense, and one was her winning the match to get the title match. Um, and, and then you had another one I just said earlier this week was her title defense, I was saying, against Anna J. Then we got the tag matches in here also on this show. That was also a main event. Let me get to it right quick since we got to get out of here. We'll run through these right quick. Uh, this show started off with a great match of luchadors, uh, face luchadors at that. As we had Commander taking on Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix wins this match um, with his own version of like a muscle buster slash like Falcon Arrow to pin Commander and get the victory in this one. You have Blackpool Combat Club watching backstage. Um, I thought he was about to attack him. No, they didn't attack. They just watched from backstage. Then we jumped over to Renee Paquette talking to Britt Baker about becoming a women's champion at All In. Uh, she said All In was her very first show, and she's been the cornerstone of AEW, laying the foundation for the division in the company, brick by brick. She's pretty confident that she's going to get the job done next weekend, so we'll see what happens there. No, you're not. <laughs> next up, they show your boy, Court Marshall. It's not my boy. Uh, he Tired of that guy. he won the Latin America Championship in AAA because he's been wrestling there Ooh. recently. Latin America Championship in AAA. Uh, for this, Johnny TV bought him a sweet ride to congratulate him. Oh. Uh, he put a belt on him just to keep him on TV, huh? I guess. Just some bullshit. Next shit. up, Ring of Tired Tag Team title match. Brother Zay and Ethan Page taking on Aussie Open. This is a warm-up match, I feel like, for Aussie Open. Uh, leading into All In. That's why. Bro, the Coriolis gets the victory in this one after 10 minutes. Okay, no. No squash match. <laughs> no, nah, they didn't get a little bit of time. Uh, post-match, Aussie Open promises they will retain their titles next weekend at All In. There's no way MGF and Adam Cole will get their kangaroo kicks on them. Uh, next up, they have, I don't know if you remember The Righteous. They were a tag team, formerly a Ring of Honor. They have now added Stu Grayson to their midst, and I guess they're coming back for all these titles pretty soon themselves, so that should be interesting. They kind of remind me a little bit of a two-man version of the original Bray Wyatt fit when okay. they first came to WWE. Not as backwoodsy, but hick, right. like that southernish to it. 
Um, match number three was a squash match. Sam Guevara uh, beat Johnny Cruz, John Cruz, I should say, in 75 seconds. Uh, they show a repackaging of Nyla Rose, so I guess it's going to be a rebirth of her or a second coming coming soon. Uh, yeah, I'm saying, I'm with Nyla Rose. Next up, they're showing next week's collision, and it's going to be Fighter Fest editions next week. Like this week's shows were Fight for the Fallen, and all the money and the proceeds went to the people, the victims of the fires in out Hawaii. In, in Hawaii, in uh, Maui. Uh, next up Respect that. is your main event of the evening. Ruby Soho and Tony Storm taking on Akira Shida and Sky Blue, who is not part of that main event next week. Well, either is Ruby Soho, Ruby but Soho. they're proxy for Britt Baker and Soraya. Soraya was on the outside of the ring for this one. Uh, eventually, uh, we had... They, to give Scott Blue a they basically, this is the same thing as always been. They had the ref distracted to try to hit him with the spray can to cheat. This time it didn't work. Eventually... Um, Tony Storm takes advantage with a high kick, but Blue gets in with the thrust kick of her own. The Storm, she did get the jackknife cover pin for the victory. After the match, they come in, they jumped him. Britt Baker runs down to try to help make the save. End of the show. Now, I feel like they, 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 so you, they got, all the, all you got all the participants of the they match. They did that against Scott Blue a win, I feel. It's okay. It's okay. Still got Blue. It helps give Scott Blue a win occasionally. So did you you want to get smacked down out the way, man? I just did smack down. Oh, so we're done, huh? Yeah, did you do collision? No, we're doing that next week. That's today. That's I haven't even today. watched it yet. Oh yeah. <laughs> you're good, brother. It's I late. Keep <laughs> it's you're good, brother. It's late. All right. So with that being said, we're finished for the day. Uh for one half of uh, hot tag Russell Corner. I am your host, Rob. I'm Clint. My uh, core host here, Ron Simmons, sends us home. Shut him down. Let's go home. And it was a Dr. Nowitzki. See you next week.